Oh man, I'm just waking up guys. I haven't even had any caffeine. I'm trying to snap myself out of it so I can wake up. Good morning guys. What's up Pawn? What's up Ali? What's up Billy? Jay? Greg? Playmaker? Ryan? Hey, good morning guys. Alright, we're up. I'm drinking this uh, Zevia Cola. The Zevia Cola. It's uh, sugar-free cola in the morning. It's honestly not that bad, and I've been drinking this. I gave up Cokes, and this is one of the ways I did it. Uh, Zevia Cola is made with stevia. So it's made with stevia leaf extract as the sweetener. And... It's got caffeine in it, like a like a like a Coca Cola, but it's vegan. It's sugar free, and it's honestly not that bad. It tastes like soda, you know. Let me know what you think about Stevia Cola or Zevia Cola in the chat. That's honestly good. Um. Anyways, you know today's video brought to you by Zevia Cola. You know, I'm just joking. It's really not. They didn't sponsor me. Uh, what's up, guys? What's up, Billy Ray? What's up, John? Get that caffeine in your system. Yes, sir. I'm trying, bro. I'm trying. I'm trying to wake up. Y'all don't understand. It's 530 in the morning here in Texas. Like, it's still dark outside. You know? Like, look at this. Let me show you what it looks like in my outside. It's still dark outside over here, man. Everybody's like, oh, you know, yelling at me. Look at this. Let me show you this. Ready? It's dark outside. All right. All right, I'm up. All right. But yeah, it's dark outside, guys. What's up, guys? Should I go eggs, French toast, or pancakes for breakfast? I mean, me, personally, I'm a pancakes guy. You know, I, I used to love French toast, but, like, I don't know. There's something about it. I think as I've gotten older, French toast is less healthy. Maybe it's not, though. It's just got sugar on it. But, like, I got to go with uh, pancakes. I'm a pancake guy. I'm a pancake. I love Waffle House. And, but Carol is like snooty and I never want to go to Waffle House. You know, I'm always like, hey, let's go to Waffle House. Cause like Waffle House has got great waffles. You know, I mean, the name rings true, but like Carol never wants to go there. Carol never wants to go to Waffle House. She's always like, let's go to IHOP. And I'm just kind of like, dude, screw IHOP, you know? So what if uh, Waffle House is on a sketchy part of town? It's, it's better. It's better food, you know? Waffle House house uh, hash browns, best in the game. Um, anyways, we got CEI. Yeah, Cracker Barrel does have some good pancakes. No lie, I went to Michigan um, a few. Uh, I went to Michigan a few years ago with with the family, and um, I went to Michigan, and all I ate was Waffle House. 
Or, uh, all I ate was pancakes. I'm sorry. All I ate was pancakes when we went to uh, Cracker Barrel. Every time we'd go to Michigan, they'd always want to go out to eat at Cracker Barrel, and I'd just get a bunch of pancakes. And I'd get pancakes and chicken and dumplings every time we go. Every time we went. Um. reasonable response i guess finn i guess you're right but i love waffle house bro what's up uncle smoke hey what's up man all right let's talk stocks guys y'all got me uh rambling over here we got um I like waffle talk. Hey, waffles are good, bro. Uh, but yeah, so, all right, CEI. So I saw this thing yesterday. Um, like I saw this thing yesterday on, um, Anyways, I saw this thing yesterday about CEI on Twitter. About CEI and the short report that dropped. I'm sure they're all mad and angry because anytime you got a stock that is so largely followed... Anytime you got a stock that's so largely followed, you got a bunch of polarized views on it. And CEI is certainly one of those stocks. If you look at this, this thing absolutely tanked yesterday after uh, a hedge fund. Not, a, I don't know if it was a hedge fund. It was a, yeah, it was a hedge fund. Uh, dropped a short report yesterday. It plunged 50%. They're basically taking aim at old Mr. Zach Morris. So Carisdale Capital addressed the Camber Energy Bulls directly in their report. And they said, quote, Camber pumpers have seized upon the notion that the company is now a play on carbon capture and clean energy, citing a license agreement recently entered into by Viking. But the ESG clean energy technology license is a joke. Fondly, we want to thank that. Uh, we want to we want to thank Zach for giving us the most fun actionable short since GSAT in 2014. Kirastel Capital wrote on Twitter. Uh, Zach Morse responded with a message to his followers. Sorry, guys. Looks like they are coordinating attacks on us. Manage your positions, he wrote. Uh, by mid-afternoon, Camber Energy had plummeted over 65% at one point. When the stock fell, it tagged the 200-day simple moving average and bounced back up towards the support and resistance level. And this is all quoting from Benzinga here. Um, and so, yeah, guys, I mean, basically, it was a short report that dropped for this one. And we'll see what happens here. But Karis Dow dropped it, said we are short. CEI report available at carry.co slash CEI. This one is something for everyone. Death spiral financing, a fake CFO, delinquent filings, fired auditors three weeks ago, insolvent energy asset, and the saddest family of entrepreneurs in the clean tech vaporware space. And I got to check this report out now, guys. Mm. 
Um, so CEI apparently is. This isn't the right one. All right, so. Karis Del Capital drops. Karis Del Capital drops something that said, "Quote: <laughs> What if they made a whole company out of red flags?" And then they put out something. And this, I'm a quoting. I'm quoting their short report article for Camber Energy, and it says, "Quote: We are short shares of Camber Energy Incorporated. Camber is a defunct oil producer that has failed to file financial statements with the SEC since September of 2020. Is in danger of having its stock delisted next month, and just fired its accounting firm in September. Its only real asset is a 73% stake in Viking Energy, which is an OTC traded company with negative book value and a going concern." warning that recently violated the maximum leverage covenant of one of its loans. For a time, it also had a fake CFO, which is a long story. Nevertheless, Camber's stock price has increased by 6% over the last month. Last week, astonishingly, an average of $1.9 billion worth of Camber shares changed hands every day. End quote. And again, this is quoting from Carousel Capital's Camber Energy Incorporated CEI short report uh basically they're talking smack about it and, and and let me know guys let me know if you guys agree with this short report or not i think it's a really interesting report of course and i think there's a lot of people that are talking about this right now and let us know what you think about it again i'm not invested in the cei you know anytime i go over these short reports i usually have at least a few bulls that start crying like listen people are going to read these anyway all right, people are going to read these reports anyway. There's nothing I can do about that. You know, this is huge market news. This thing tanked one of the biggest moving stocks in the last week, 50 plus percent. And we're going to talk about why. I mean, CEI is down big. Of course, I mean, the reality is uh, I warned somebody last week about CEI and, you know, I told the guys the truth. And honestly, I'm, I don't know if I've ever been this right on anything. Now, of course, if we're looking at it objectively, there's no way I was going to predict that a short report was ultimately going to come out for CEI. But I digress. And, you know, it, it is what it is. The thing that you got to be careful with is that when you've got some of these big time Twitter followers like Zach Morris or anybody else and you have you have them promoting like a very specific stock what happens is that they're ultimately pumping up these stocks sometimes. You know, they're telling their whole following, hey, I'm in the stock. Hey, I'm in the stock. And so their whole following just ends up buying it and holding it with them. Right. And so that sets their whole following up for failure. It kind of, it's just kind of this big stock pick thing that is not good for traders because a lot of traders get stuck in moves like this. And then when moves like this happen, you know, they they're never really accountable for it and so it's just this big mess now i'm not hating on zach morris i don't think it's necessarily their fault i think people are going to follow them anyway but like it is what it is with cei and it's a weird story of the market i know what they always say it was a fake report um you know uh, like i said uh, okay, I'll tell you this. SOS had a short report that was very similar that came out, and now we see what happened with SOS. Now, SOS report didn't kill SOS. It's just one of those things that, you know, had one of these reports drop, and then a few months later, uh, everybody, even though the stock is tanking, you know, it, they're still defending it, mostly because a lot of people are stuck back holding it now, and they desperately want to believe that it's going to come back. Uh, I, I think that uh, these obvious these these reports obviously have you know, a conflict of interest there. They obviously want the stock to drop with it since they're shorting it. But I also think there's probably some truth to these reports, guys. Like like when they, when they do these reports, they come out with real data that people use and like real things to look into specifically with these reports. And I get it. You're going to have a lot of people that are bag holding these things and a lot of people that are stuck in these things. And so they don't want to say anything negative. Anytime anybody says anything negative, they get really emotional and upset at you for saying anything negative. What I'm trying to say though, is that usually these reports do have a veil of truth in them. And I get it. Some of you might be holding this, but I, you know, it is what it is uh, with CEI. Um, you know, I mean, if, if we looked at prior to this report, if we looked at the daily chart, the daily chart's looking pretty nasty. You know, this thing has tanked very hard. 
in 2019 in October and just tanked all the way down to 50 cents and every subsequent spike after it tanked down to 50 cents, this thing spiked up to $4 failed, spiked up to $3 failed, spiked up to 250 failed, spiked up to 130s failed, spiked back up to two, uh, $3 failed, spiked up recently to fours failed. And so, you know, for people to say, Hey, well this, you know, all the other ones, all the other ones failed, but this is the one that's going to succeed. Again, it usually shows that people are just being misled with the company yet again. And it's pretty easy to talk a bunch of the masses into buying up a specific stock if they do it right. And I think that's, what's going on here now. Who knows is pure speculation. Um, well, of course the CEO came out and said it's incorrect. You know, that's what's going to happen, Uncle Smoke. No offense. I mean, listen, you know I got your back, bro. Uh, but you and I can disagree on this one. There's going to be stocks that we disagree on, of course. And uh, that's the inevitable thing in the stock market. Everybody's going to disagree on certain stocks. Uh, you know, regardless of what anybody else believes, I'm going to tell people my honest opinion on this. And again, I think there's probably some truth to this. Uh, it might not be the full truth. There might be um, embellishments on the short report side, of course, but I do think that there's probably some truth to this as well. Um, you know, I think that these, these people that are shorting these stocks research the stocks to do it really well on. And when they find something that they don't like, they, you know, blast it. And I think that's kind of what's going on here. Um, let me catch back up in the chat. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, I, I'm certainly going to be biased here as well because I had some people last week literally get into an argument with me about CEI, and I and it was it, and what I told them was that listen, CEI might move up, and this is like close to verbatim what I told them. If any guy, if any of you all were here in the chat, I had a few different people come out and say, "Nah, CEI is going to be at you know ten dollars or whatever it is." And I told him, I said, look, see, I might go up to five or 10 bucks or whatever you think it is, but I promise you in 30 days, it's going to be right back down. And, you know, I hate this. I hate to be the guy that said, hey, I told you so, but I did, you know, uh, I was very open about me being skeptical. And again, this is the risk with some of these penny stocks. If you listen, guys, there's so many pitfalls that you can get into investing in penny stocks. There's a reason that most, a large majority of people fail investing into penny stocks. And that, that number of failures in penny stocks is dramatically higher than investing in any other niche in the stock market, right? Like you invest in swing trade, you invest in mid and large cap stocks. You're probably going to have, even if you're not that great of a trader, if you're investing into larger cap stocks, you'll probably have, I would say, at least a 40% accuracy rate, at least a 50% accuracy rate on average, right? If you invest in these penny stocks, a large majority of these are going to fail. Um, and so it, it's just another chip off the block for CEI. We'll see what happens here. But again, I mean, you got to see when, when a stock's making a move like this, guys, usually it's being manipulated on the front side. And so, you know, when a stock's making a move like this from 33 cents all the way up to $5 in like two weeks, usually it's being influenced and manipulated anyway by large groups. And so it is what it is, you know, who knows what's going to happen with it, but yeah. Yeah, right. For sure. Uh, let me, let me, like I said, let me know what you guys think. Uh, okay, cool smoke no worries brother uh yeah nobody listens man you know nobody listens frank it's like i try to tell people it's like listen i get people people are so desperate to criticize me you know because i keep it real with everybody they're so desperate to criticize me you know like uh when um when I take big swings, when I ever, anytime I lose, they're like, see, this guy sucks. And then when I trade a larger account, they're like, see, this guy doesn't really use all of his account. And then it's like, okay, well, when I start to trade larger, they see, see, this guy's not really consistent. And then when I just start to trade smaller again to try to find consistency, they're like, see, this guy only makes $20 a day. It's like people are going to criticize no matter what. In the end, I'm going to be honest with you guys and CEI it was a sketchy move i called it out i think it was last week that we talked about this maybe somebody on the chat remembers a little bit more but i'm pretty sure it was last week where we talked about cei being pretty sketch and uh yeah that's what we've gotten today um cei crashed down let me know if you're stuck in it um rough move to be honest here 
All right, we got y, we got VYGR, VYGR flying up this morning. Look at VYGR here. This thing is moving, guys. Pretty crazy. Um, uh, we also have Palantir, guys. Palantir PLTR. Palantir sitting at 25.18s. Let's go ahead and look at the catalyst for this one. All right, so Palantir is up. Um, Palantir hit a uh, like a $823 million contract for intelligence data and fabric and analytic solutions from the U.S. Army is what happened with Palantir. So they reached basically an $800 plus million deal with the U.S. Army. That's what's going on here. Um, but yeah, look at look at VYGR here. We're going to throw this one on our list now. VYGR. And this one's ripping up too. Uh, let's see if we can figure out why. But yeah, VYGR is popping up. And we're using Benzinga scanners here, guys. So if you haven't checked out Benzinga scanners, uh, I'll post this link. Super useful. I'm, I'm making sure to advertise these a lot more because, um, because they're giving away uh, free trials without net needing a credit card. So you can try them out for free. And if you like the platform, if you like the, the, um, the scanners, then you, you know, you can try them out completely free on Benzinga for two weeks. A uh, really cool uh, program. Very few companies actually do that. And so check out Benzinga. There's the link. Yo, yo, you think PLTR goes over 30? I think it's possible. I mean, it's moving up some. Let me look at VYGR real quick, and then we'll switch over to Palantir. Uh, so, yeah, this is Voyager Therapeutics. They announced a license option agreement with Pfizer for next-generation Tracer AAV capside to enable neurologic and cardiovascular gene therapy programs. Um, so, yeah, they received 30 mil in upfront payments with potential option exercise fees and milestone payments of up to 600 million plus product sales-based royalties. Um, and yeah, VYGR is flying up here. If we're looking at the data, it's got 26.272 million in the flow, 26.272 million. Um, I also worked on my app a little bit more. Let me show you guys. I didn't do that much to it. I don't have that much time to work on this thing guys, but I did work on this app a little bit. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta put this in a CSS class next, but for now, like, we're just going to leave this like this. Um, there we go. It should work still. Check it out. So this is what I've done with the app. All right, so now what we can do is we can enter this here. So for instance, we can enter this, we can enter in CEI and we can search for CEI and it'll tell you the name, the symbol, the exchange, the change in short float percentage. So the change in short float percentage overnight for CEI is 7% down. You can also scroll down here and I added the short report chart to this as well. Uh, and so I did add the short report chart here too, so that we can see the short uh, change activity here and yeah you can check it out so again we're going to try to get this app ready for debut and it's going to be completely free here let me again let me know anything you want added to it we added the chart to it um and this is just for anything we could use galaxy here we could add the chart to it um and yeah we could add basically any of this data you can see your exchange name symbol url uh, chart and so this is the chart we threw up is ship ripping what's up ricardo um so let me check out ship guys hold on one second and ship is still flying man how crazy is ship Look at this thing, man. That is just ridiculous, man. 
all the way up to 23s, man. Who, who knew, man? Let me know. Are any of you guys holding ship here? Junior Casa CEI. Yeah, and I mean, the reality is, though, is that, like, of course, the stock guy's going to come out. You know what I mean? Like, like, I don't know how I feel about this, because what happens here is, like, with CEI is it creates these communities of bag holders. You know what I mean? And these bag holders, like, they only look at positive. Anything negative, they attack. And it's just kind of like what happens is that, of course, the CEI is going to come out and, and disc discredit the Shore report. The truth is, is that we saw a very similar thing with like SOS back in early of this year. Early this year, we saw the same, the, the exact same thing with SOS. And again, people got mad. People said that SOS was going to be a $30 stock. People said that SOS was the future. And again, this is an obscure Chinese penny stock at the time right so nobody really knows what sos was about to do but just because so many people were stuck in it they were just defending it saying they were getting mad at me for even talking about the report you know and, and then i mean in hindsight looking at this thing a year later it's at two dollars a share you know and this is with bitcoin ripping up over 50k i mean if sos is a mining company it should be thriving during this point in time but it's not and so some of the my point is is that even though you might be stuck in CEI right now, and even though that short report might bother you because it's causing you to lose, understand the regardless of how you feel about that short report, understand the significance of it because usually there's some truth to this, um, you know. And of course, the CEO of CEI is going to be like, "Nah, -uh, that's not true," you know. <laughs> but um, it is what it is, you know. It is what it is. KXIN popped. Yeah, KXIN popped up a little bit. Not not anything serious though. Like this isn't anything to really talk about in my opinion. Um, it's up some, but not not enough to really you know care too much about. In all honesty, for me, um, oh, we got Voyager that still looks pretty good. We'll see if it holds three sixties. Yeah, I'm looking at um, the market and everything else here, and uh, SHIB, everything, and looking at the crypto market, Ethereum, Litecoin, EOS, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, TRX, Ethereum Classic, Chainlink, QTOM, Uniswap, Sushi, Comp, Aave, YVI, YFI, Doge, Mana, uh, Lina, everything's basically down, you know, let me check my Coinbase profile, it's been a minute, let me make sure. We're still alive over there on Coinbase. Um, uh, we're down like seventy bucks. Yeah. Hmm. All right, guys. So, here's VYGR here. Here's Pelantir. So, Pelantir looking pretty strong here. I think $25 is a really big level that a lot of people are ultimately watching for Pelantir. Um, so we'll see if it holds. We'll see what happens there, guys. Um, big movements, you know, big movements, of course.
Um, but yeah, I mean, we do have Shib popping up and ripping here, go though, guys. Here's Shib. Anything that you guys suggest that I put on my app here? Again, I'm working on this app. I'm kind of like I said, I'm only working on it for about 20 minutes a day, and we we did some little minor improvements on the app so far. Uh, basically, the goal of the app is to look up the short data. You know, so like we can enter a symbol here, and again, like we can enter in CEI or we can enter in SOS. You know, um, first uh, uh, first step is to get rid of this US because we're only really targeting US stocks, right? Um, wait, I wonder if I could target other stocks too outside of the US market. Uh, Canada stocks. Let me look at some Canada stocks here. All right, so the Canadian market has the TSX. Um, let's see if it'll look this up. No, it failed to pull it. Um, okay, so that didn't work. Did this thing just break my app? Okay, so we got a status code of 404. Uh, all right, well, <laughs> I'll have to figure that bug out. So basically, I just need to get rid of this US option. Um, just be easy. I can get rid of that literally right now. Uh, yeah, you could pay me a chip. Mo, what's up, bro? John, can you name me an app? You mean make you an app, I'm assuming? I can make you an app, bro. What do you want? You know, you can pay me in ship too, as long as ship holds, you know? <laughs> Well, what's up, Mo? Hope good to see you, brother. Uh, can you do any relevant news or S3 filings? I can. I can do. Let me show you what, what I can show on screen. So let me show you what I can show on screen. I'm using the Fintel API here, and I am show. I can show all this stuff. So I can show security ownership. Insider trades, security short volume, stock regulatory filings, and institutional holdings. Um, those are the, the four things I show. If I went premium, I could then show security ownership, activist 13 D and G filings, owner history, and institutional holdings. So, you know, basically I can show for free, I can show insider trades, security short volume and stock regulatory filings and what i mean by stock regulatory filings here is hold on let me grab my key and what i might do is i might just put this this app out and then kind of slowly update it as time goes on what should i call this app guys what should the name of the app be All right, and stock regulatory filings basically shows eight K filings, which is dope. Yeah, okay, so this actually shows pretty extensive filings. I'm trying to see where the name of the filing is. Okay, so here it is. Ah, okay, so I could just this is what I can do. All right. This is what I can do. On this app, I can put a link to the recent filings that this stock has had. All right, I think that's a really good idea. So in this app, I'll put a I'll put a link to the recent filings that this that the stock in question has had. And so I can do that. I can throw the URL up, and hopefully it'll allow you to click on it and go to that page. Um, but that's what I'm planning on doing, and, and it's a slow process. But that's actually a good idea. Yeah. Good morning, job, John. You are the YouTube man of the year. Hey, thank you, bro. I try over here. You know, I try. Um, but yeah, call it shorty shorts. To be honest, I was thinking of calling it squeeze. I was thinking of calling it squeeze and making my logo a lemon. You know. And it would be a free app on the App Store. I think I'm probably going to call it that. It's going to be called Squeeze. I'm going to make my logo a lemon and make it downloadable on the App Store for free.
I could do one. I mean, it's not that I could invoke. I could invoke crypto stat. Uh, I could invoke that. I can use crypto stats on an app spec, but I think I would have to create a separate app. It, it's a very it'd be a it'd be the exact same app. It would just look up the crypto market, or I guess I could probably add it. It depends on a fintel. For crypto, I'd probably just want to use the Trading View API. In all honesty, so I'd probably just want to use Trading View because they're the freest and and the most thorough. Um, and so I'd probably want to use those, but it would depend. You know? um. Yeah, I mean, I could, you know, like I said, it, it depends on what Fintel has in terms of API listings. Um, like I could try to look up Bitcoin on the app. Let me see. But I don't think it's gonna let me. It just depends on specifically what what it's hooked up to the market. I think it's gonna break it. Yeah, it just broke the app. But something about my app isn't working because I have the spiral, but it's supposed to give me a it's supposed to give me a this stock is not found notification and it's not. So I, it's broken. So apparently that's one of the error messages I gotta fix before it goes live. Which let me write that down. All right, but uh, yeah, guys, so check it out. So we got uh, SHIB up there to 23. We've got Palant here testing 25 bucks, and we'll see if it actually holds that level here. We've got ACR on the move. It's at 280s, LXRX on the move too. Um, app free with ads, is that the plan? No, the app is just going to be free, bro. Um, the app is just going to be free. Maybe we'll throw some ads in there later, but we would in order like a lot of people. Okay. Any app should be free in the beginning. You know, if you uh, too many people build apps like, listen, this app does not take long for a programmer to build. It just doesn't. It might take two days to build this app, not four days, like two days of off and on work on it. Right. So uh, maybe less than that really probably take 45 minutes if I'm being completely honest. Um, but it takes me two days because I don't work on it all at once. But the point is, is that I'm not going to throw a bunch of ads on it early because that's just going to ruin it. That's going to kill the app, bro. Um, what I will do, though, is I'll, I'll leave a plug for my YouTube channel in there. And so anybody that downloads it outside of my YouTube channel will get a link here and come here. Uh, that's the plan, at least. I'm stupid, everybody. Like, <laughs> now you're good, Bob. I get it. I mean, listen, the goal of it is just to make it free, though. You know, like, like, uh, okay, I could charge for it. I could charge like a small fee of like two bucks or like four dollars, like three ninety nine for the app on the app store. But then nobody's gonna see it, and so I'd rather just do it for free, get some get some followers from it, and uh, let people look up stuff for free. Now, ultimately, that depends on what the commercial license is for the Fintel API. If the commercial license is super high, then I'm just not going to do it. But if it's like 100 bucks a month, I'll do it, you know, uh, and, and just let people have it for free. Um, all right, so we got ZOM on the move. Yeah, what's up, John? Yeah, that's right, Lucas. Like, I could put some other stuff in this app, too. Let me see what else I could show. The only other thing I could show in terms of, like, short volume is... We've got the entire URL here. And so what does this URL bring us to, is the question. All right, but yeah, let me know what you want us to look at. We're going to get a vote going on. Um, in the chat right now, call out the top three stocks you want us to take a look at. And the most the most called out stocks are the ones that we're actually going to look at. So let me know what you're looking at. Let me know what the top three stocks that you want us to watch. And I'll even post a banner up.
Who's your top three today? Call them out in chat and we'll take a look. Um, all right, let me, anyways, let me see what this brings me to. Oh, this is actually pretty useful. Hmm. Ooh. Honestly, bring go into the actual page. This gives us way more information. How do I get this data from my API though, bro? So it tells me all the information at the URL. This is useful information. Let me let me let me run this back here, guys. Uh, um, where's the chart? There's the chart right there. And we're just going to copy this one. We don't really care about what the styling is necessarily here. All right. Fix that if it looks bad. Uh, and then we can just put the URL. Um. see what this would show so it's stock data dot url is it see if it'll show me just that So here's the data. Okay, so we got the API link. We just got to make this a link now, which should be pretty easy. Let me shrink this a little bit. this a little bit bigger all right so now we basically built this so what we can it links directly with fintel and you can find the entire short report here if we want so there we go all right all right guys let me let me stop poking around in my app and we'll do some stuff uh intc could you go over facebook since this is the news for being a, <laughs> uh, what's the play with gte yeah we're watching gte2 aim drops tesla small direct club amd uh Sidecoin gaining momentum. FDMA announces FDA clearance of their drug spreads are huge. All right, so let's take a look, guys. We got a few different callouts here, uh, specifically FDMA. Yeah, FDMA is not showing up anything on my list. ITNC. I'm assuming you mean INTC here, and INTC looks all right. Uh, we got Mbot. Mbot's popping up here, so Mbot is up to eight dollars a share. Eight dollars a share. Tesla AMD. All right, so we'll take a look at
Palantir. So yeah, YVGR. FDMT. Mm, FDMT is too slow for me personally. Here's Palantir. Mbot. We got YVGR on the move. Or VYGR, I mean. All right, guys, bear with me. Um, here's YVGR here. And again, YVGR, this is Voyager Therapeutics. Uh, they are up after they received 30 million in upfront uh, payments and a milestone payment of up to 600 million plus. Uh, and so that is what's happening with Pfizer here, or not with Pfizer, with Voyager. Um, one second, guys. Um, Uh, market cap of Palantir. Sorry, checking that out now. Give me one second, guys. So here with Palantir, the cap is two billion, or not two billion. The the shares outstanding is one point nine five billion. Let me see what the cap is. Uh, so the market cap is forty seven point five billion, according to Benzinga. And again, check out Benzinga. This is where Benzinga is especially useful because they allow you to. Uh, do all this different stuff on there so this is where benzinga is especially useful testing one two testing one two all right guys what's up qualius what's up rego um Bitcoin, yeah, so Bitcoin is flying this morning, guys. Absolutely flying up here. Check it out. So here's uh, here's SHIB, and then here's Bitcoin. So Bitcoin flying up this morning after a recent drop. It's at 51.241. Looks great. What's up, Qualius? Uh, all right, guys, let me get some music playing now. CEI reversal. Let's see. So let me know what you guys want to do here. Dude, how do I get in contact with freaking Trading View, man? Where do I get in contact with them, dude?
All right, but yeah, we got CEI here, and CEI's at 120s. Pretty rough time for CEI. Again, the short report came out. Let's go ahead and talk about that short report, guys. I think it's an important thing to talk about. I saw it on... Um, I saw it on Twitter. Let me let me bring this short report up. All right, and this is the criticisms of CEI. Now, I'm going to disclaim this. It says, as of the publication date of this report, Carisdell Capital and its affiliates have short positions in the stock of Camber Energy. They stand to realize gains in the event that the stock price decreases. Following the publication, they may transact in the securities of the company. All expressions are of opinion and are subject to change without notice. And Carisdell does not undertake any update, uh, undertake to update this report or any information therein. Basically, don't sue them. Uh, but yeah, so... Camber was founded in 2004. We're reading some of this stuff about CEI here. Uh, at first glance, it's pretty extensive what they have written here. But of course, I mean, they're shorting the company. Um, so Camber and Viking announced a new merger agreement in February of this year. Uh, they were aiming to get take out the remaining Viking shares that weren't owned by Camber and combine the two companies fully. Uh, that plan is currently on hold because Camber failed to file its last 10K filing, uh, as well as two subsequent 10Qs filing, and is thus in danger of being delisted unless it catches up by November. That's something that's really important for you guys to understand. You know, for all those people that are holding CEI, this is true, all right? Um, and then Camber had what they ca called absurd... Uh, had an absurd equity valuation that rests entirely on its maturity stake in a small, unprofitable oil and gas company that is all rolled up and cobbled together by a Canadian lawyer, they say. Uh, the question that they've asked is, what is Camber's actual equity valuation? Um... Well, it looks like a simple answer, which is 104.2 million shares outstanding times a 309 closing price equals a market cap of 322 million, which is absurd given what Camber owns, they say. They say those figures only tell part of the story, and they estimate that the correct fully diluted market cap is actually a staggering 882 million, and including the impact of both Camber's unusually highly dilutive Series C convertible preferred stock and its convertible debt. Uh, reading more into this here, it says Camber's share count has risen exponentially because of its convertible preferred stock. They accrue non-cash dividends at the sky-high rate of 25%, basically 24.95% per year for a notional seven years, but can be converted into common shares at any time. The face value of the preferred shares converts into common shares at a fixed conversion price of 162.50 per share. What? Far higher than the current trading price. The problem is that additional conversion premium, which is equal to the full seven years worth of dividends, or seven multiplied times 24.95%, is equal to 175% of face value all at once and is converted at a far lower conversion price that will, quote, never be approximately 0.3985 per share, regardless of the actual trading price. Hmm. Yeah. Let me know what you think about it. It gets deep here, man. It gets deep and rough. Uh, let me know what you think about it. I mean, of course, we're going to talk about it. Oh, AI. I mean, it's a major, major story in today's market. So, I mean, it's this is something that we got to talk about. Um, they got email support, create a new ticket. I know I emailed them yesterday. I never got back. I never heard back. Um, I'm trying to get in touch with them. Uh, where do we create a ticket?
Uh, but yeah, kind of a crazy story here, guys, with that. Um, where the watch list is, a question mark on the bottom. Um, so, so far, the watch list is pretty small right now. I mean, we're watching CEI just based off of the sheer amount of people watching this currently. Uh, YVGR, uh, YVG, or VYGR, I mean, VYGR is probably at the top, followed by Acer at number two, um, followed by PLTR at number three, followed by CER, or CEI at number four, followed by KXIN at number five, followed by FAMI at number six. Um uh, we had a lot of people asking about Facebook and the craziness. Facebook kind of rebounded a little bit from yesterday. And this is why, like, okay, one of the single easiest ways to profit in some of these larger cap stocks is by waiting for big drops. And I mean, big overreactions in the market. And, and maybe you could consider it an overreaction or you could consider it not an overreaction. Regardless, um, regardless, Um, a lot of the time after we get these big catastrophic drops in these large healthy companies, usually we're at least going to get a rebound. And so one of the most profitable ways to approach these trades is to wait for them to form a confirmed low like Facebook did at 322.70. And then once it's confirmed a low multiple times that a lot of other traders are going to see and hopefully respect like this, like look at all the confirmations here. Once it forms a low like that, you just buy the dip and you, you ride it up for you know less than a day and you sell. Uh, and that's what a lot of people do here. And, you know, if you look at any catastrophic drop in any stock from a catalyst like that, usually they're going to bounce back at least short term and you can profit from it. It's one of the easier swing trading, kind of longer term day trading strategies uh, that you can get involved with. Um, you could also see KOLD, which I believe is an ETF here is popping up. What's up, Juan? Yeah, I just think so many people get wrapped up in, in like gurus, like zach and everybody else and i'm not hating on zach i just think a lot of people just kind of follow exactly what he says and it's like by doing so a lot of them get stuck in these moves like cei and it is what it is you know what i mean like of course like those type of people kind of program you to defend them so it's like no matter what happens even if something like this happens they're gonna blame it on something else they're never gonna be like hey my bad i shouldn't have, i shouldn't have pushed this stock you know, instead, they're going to say, oh, well, you know, it was this person. It was this. So, you know, it would have worked if it wasn't for those shady short reports. Uh, and it is what it is. Um, support ticket is a question mark icon if you open your trading view chart bottom right. Um, does it need to be the desktop? Because currently I just have... Uh, let me pull the chart up. I see the question mark, but it doesn't actually bring me to anything. It brings me to the help center, but it doesn't actually show me how to contact them, which I think they probably do on purpose. Yeah, there's no way for me to write a room support ticket. I've tried. Um, Um, no, it doesn't say create a ticket. I think it's only for premium users. AI, if you have a premium, um, that's probably what it is. Uh, today is looking like a sucky day so far. I might just take the day off and go, to, uh, go to the lease. Hey, do your thing, bro. Um, but yeah, we got, it's been a pretty crappy week in all honesty. We got VYGR, we got ACER, we got CEI on the move. Uh, we got IPDN, we got PLTR trying, we've got uh, FAMI, we got AC, ACER, we've got, um, I see UVXY, but it's just an inverse volatility ETF here. Um, so it's going to do the opposite of what the SPY does if the SPY is down. Hey, yeah, of course, my 10% ADVM. 
yeah, it doesn't say that for everybody, AI. It doesn't say that for me, especially. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Damn, dude, I, every day I forget to monetize my live streams. Oh, I did monetize it today. Good. Don't forget Sheba. Yeah, we're looking at Sheba, man. Sheba's flying this morning too, bro. Uh, if we look at Sheba here, pretty big moves. It's up to 22, 23. So pretty solid movement for Sheba here. And we're certainly watching it. Anything else you guys want to watch? What are you guys uh, looking at today? All right, guys. Hey, so what are we watching today, guys? I mean, listen, we got BYGR. We got uh, Bitcoin up to about 5,200 50, or 52,000, 51,200 is what I mean. Um, so, yeah, we're watching that here. Do you think there's some trades to get involved with? I guess I could trade some crypto. What do you guys think? Should I trade crypto or should I not trade crypto? Bag hold Shiba, hey, maybe so. Uh, AMC was a good trade yesterday. Hey, my man, Mr. Ten Percent for the good looking vibes and the best trades coming. Which one? I don't know yet. What's hot? Hey, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you, my man. Uh... <laughs> Michael Johnson, what are you talking about, bro? Michael Johnson says, quote, and I'm quoting this because it's it's not accurate at all. He says, crypto trading is illegal in the USA. Our IRS is catching people and putting them in jail. That's silly. Um, the IRS isn't putting people in jail for crypto trading. They're putting people in jail for tax fraud. And, uh, you know, they're there for 
money laundering is really what they're putting people in jail for. And people are just using crypto to do it. All crypto is not illegal. That's silly. You know, come on, bro. Think about it. If crypto trading is illegal, well, I'm freaking damn, dude. I, I missed my shot. There was my shot to have a great comparison. Great joke. If crypto trading is illegal, I'm Machine Gun Kelly. You know, there you go. Nailed it. Uh, bro, they said it's not currency, but better. You know, hey, what's up? I wasn't around. Moondog, Moondog said, morning, guys. Who was around for the CEI fiasco? We've covered it a lot this morning. Uh, but crazy. It's code. Who is that? I don't know. I was trying to think of like a famous criminal. I guess uh, here's a better one. If trading crypto is illegal, then I'm Al Capone. All right, there you go. That was probably a better one. I was trying to think of like a gangster criminal, but then I thought of Machine Gun Kelly. But then I also remember that he is like the rapper guy, Machine Gun Kelly, you know, which honestly, I like some of his music. Some of his music's cool. But like, I also think he's freaking weird. And, uh, you yeah. know, you are Chris Hemsworth, you mean, you know? Has CEI hit bottom? I don't know, man. CEI is already sketchy, and it just depends, man. I think I think but prior to this, look at BTBT. Yeah, BTBT is one we're watching too. BTBT had solid movement yesterday as well. Um, so we're watching BTBT. Yeah, you need a big scar. I mean, listen, if, if I'm if I'm uh, I need like a diaper, really, you know. Uh, should have said Tupac. No, I like Tupac. You know, fake money. Uh, it's thirty nine million to sit in. You should have said Tupac to make it more ridiculous. PLTR dying a slow death. That's fitting since Al Capone went to prison for tax evasion. Palantir dipping. I like BTBT. Honestly, guys, look at BTBT. This one put in big moves yesterday. And again, I'm using Benzinga scanners to find these moves. So I'm using Benzinga scanners to find these moves. Uh, and if you want to check out Benzinga, I got you. Here's the link. Check it out. Um, super useful. They have crypto scanners as well. Uh, so Benzinga does have crypto scanners as well. And so check them out. You can sign up for Benzinga and get two weeks free trial without even needing a card, I think. I don't even think you need a card to sign up uh, to Benzinga. So you can try out Benzinga literally for free without needing a card for two weeks. And if you like it, you know, there's the link in the chat. Check it out. Uh, yeah, we're the third handsome and most humble. That's right. We're the most humble. We're the top one most humble traders in the world right now, for sure. Um, you know, humility is my middle name, guys. It's Chris Humility uh, Hemsworth. Uh, all right, guys. So we got... Um, I'm at the most... I hate this part of the... I hate this part of the year. You know why? It's because I get the October extension for taxes, and I got to pay so much money for taxes. It's so ridiculous. I got to get it. I got I, I to gotta set myself up for a C corporation. I don't know what I've been doing for this freaking YouTube business, but I got to give them so much money. IRS, I'm certainly not evading taxes because the IRS is about to get a check for me in the next week. And I am not freaking happy about it, bro. Not happy about it at all. They're getting a check, you know. Um, Well, what, what was the best place to buy sheep? Well, I mean, it's BitGit, you know, of course. You can check out BitGit here. You can buy sheep. You can trade crypto. You can trade. Uh, you can invest in crypto. You can trade futures on crypto. And you can copy trade other profitable traders, guys. There's the link. Check it out. All right, guys. They say CEI will get uh, listed using LLC. I have an LLC already, so I'm protected as an LLC. I need an LLC, you know, uh, but I have it. It's it's already an LLC, but I need to file as an S Corp. It's either S Corp or C Corp. Let me see what it is. That's one of them. It's an S Corp. So I need to file as an S Corp is what it is, not a C Corp. Um, what an S Corp basically, just to give you some game in business, guys, what an S Corp basically allows me to do, like right now I'm paying like 25% in taxes. Um, but what an S Corp ultimately allows me to do is an S Corp allows me to pay myself a salary and then everything else is a business expense. And as long as I separate it as a 
through a, a business bank account, then I'm able to save a ton of money on taxes through uh, using an S corp, um, filing as an S, S corp. Because honestly, I procrastinated it because I've been so busy. I haven't really thought about it as much until I realized how much money I'm going to have to pay in taxes this year. And I'm not happy about it at all. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, of course, paying it, guys. Don't worry. I'm paying my taxes. I'm not happy about it, though. PLTR dropping down. It's at 25. Uh, hey, what's up, Tommy? Right, exactly. Jason, that's the point. You know, that's the goal. You know what I mean? Kind of set myself up, pay myself a salary, and then let everything else get written off. Who's Jeff? All right, so we got Palantir tip, uh, dumping down here. We got CEI on the move up. Or, or CEI not on the move up. Um, I mean, we'll see what happens, guys. We got IPDN on the move. We've got ACER. We got VV or VYGR on the move as well. What do you guys think is going to happen today, team? That way you can claim 100% of losses not capped at 3K. Well, my problem, though, here's the problem with that. Because of the wash sale rule, Jason, I'm going to have to pay. Uh, because of the wash sale rule, I can't write off a lot of my losses because I'm trading the same stocks every day. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. It's all right. To be honest, uh, what I make or lose from trading, I'm not going to have to worry about that until next year. I always get the October extension. So this is taxes from last year. Who was coming in here? Hey, what are you doing? I'm not allowed to leave, but I'm getting, I'm going to have to be there early after school. Why? For science. Alright. Alright. Alright, love you. Love you. You got new makeup. You look pretty. Looks good. Um, love you. Have a good day. Alright. Oh, I'm not complaining about it, Michael. You know, I'm, I'm paying my taxes. I mean, honestly, I, me complaining about it should make it more legitimate because, I mean, listen, if I was if I was being sketchy with my taxes, I wouldn't be over here complaining about it, you know? And honestly, my taxes are probably uh, higher than they should be. I was very lenient on a lot of different things and, and with my taxes. And so it's probably really, I should have paid less, but like just to play it safe, uh, I paid, I just kind of rounded up to the highest numbers uh, just to play it safe as always, you know? So tax man, don't sue me. Uh, so yeah, my daughter's finally putting on, you know, my, my daughter's kind of, she's 12. She's wearing makeup now. And so I had to tell her she was pretty because she's wearing makeup now, you know. And she looked good. Carol's teaching her to do the makeup thing. I don't know how I feel about it. But my baby girl is getting so old. I don't know what to do. Um, all right. Flat tax. Yeah, we'll see. Uh... Good morning, Lil John and the East Side Traders. Much love. Run up those likes and be blessed all. That's right. Do it now. Yeah, for sure. Well, I did it in my old house, Jason. I did that this year for my old house. Luckily, though, with taxes, I'm a big nerd, and so I buy a bunch of tech stuff. And I use it for work, and so I can write it off. Sum up it. Uh, now we got VYGR. VYGR just reclaimed the VWAP. It's up to 350s, 360s right now. What's up, Andy? Yeah. 
Oh, I'm already kind of running. She, I mean, yeah, I mean. Do it now. Yeah, hey, I can do that. Point says she's 25 and moves to Florida. Uh, not anytime soon. She better not move to Florida, bro. I've been watching those videos. Uh, I've been watching those trap. It was like trap, not trap Laura Ross, but I've been watching trap Laura Ross, but it's also uh, trap stories, you know, and I've been watching the story about Fulio and Young and Ace over there in Jacksonville, Florida, and like the gangs that they've got going on over there. It's super interesting stuff. But with that said, she better not move to Jacksonville, you know, uh, do it now you know you want to i don't think anybody here probably understands what i just said so we'll just move on from that uh what's up fishing hey good morning bro at least you have carol i'm flying solo over here yeah um mine moved to florida for one month ago was back for a week no yeah hey i don't know i'm trying to get my daughter to go to Texas A&M. Even though I'm a huge LSU fan, um, I don't see much else, guys. We're looking at FLGC. I see ACER. We've got NXTP trying to show up. Uh, NXTP is on the move. We got VY or VYGR. That is the only good looking one. We do see the U shape breakout pattern here, and this U shape breakout pattern might be interesting. So we're watching this. Uh, Hey, what's up, Kieran? Uh, we're looking at VYGR. My home is in Florida. I got family in Florida, too. I mean, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, originally. So, like, I'm from Louisiana, so it's not that far away from Florida. But we got some family in Florida. Um, but, yeah, I'm trying to get her to go to A&M. Probably a better school than LSU, if I'm being honest, even though I'm a big LSU fan. I think A&M is probably a better school. We got VXRT popping up. It's at 740s. 740s. VYGR is easy to borrow and trade zero. Um, so yeah, we also have VXRT popping up here. VXRT. I'm looking at like boil on the move here. And again, what do you guys think of the CEI fiasco, man? CEI had all that craziness that dropped with regards to the short report that came out. Do you guys agree or disagree with the short report? Let's go ahead and ask the chat. All right, do you agree or disagree with the C the CEI short report that was dropped? Again, if you haven't been following along, uh, if you haven't been following along, another company specifically, let me see what they're called. Um, Carisdale Capital dropped a short report. Uh, and I'm going to read this here. This is from 20 hours ago. They said, quote, we are short CEI. The report is available here. This one has something for everyone. Death spiral financing, a fake CFO, delinquent filings, fired auditors three weeks ago, insolvent energy assets, and the saddest family of entrepreneurs in the clean tech vaporware space, end quote. And this is all quoting from Carousel Capital. If you've seen it, do you agree or disagree last night? Dude, I fell asleep on the on the, on the wild card game for the Yankees versus Red Sox. Last time I looked, the Red Sox were up four to one. Who won? Are the Yankees out? Okay, so the Red Sox won. That's what I figured. It was four to one when I last looked at it. I saw, um, I saw Bogart. I saw them walk. Uh, I saw them walk. Uh, man, what's his name? And then I saw Xander hit a two-run home run in the third, or maybe it was in the first. Yeah, Yankees are done. Um, I absolutely agree, and that's not the only company with non-steps. There are at least 2,000 others. There's nothing like watching a stock drop by $1.20 in two minutes and not being, able to tra not being in a trade. From Denham Springs and in Texas, Houston, and CEI's down. Yeah, I mean, that's that's right around where I'm from. My mom, my mom lived in Denham Springs whenever it flooded uh, a, a few years back like three or four years ago maybe it was longer than that but my mom lived it was actually a sad story my mom owned a little house out in denim springs like a little two-bedroom house 
like a tiny house and uh it was right off of jubin and um when that hurricane came through it flooded everything and my mom completely lost her house right and so my mom packs up and she's like well if i lost my house she ended up selling it to like a flipper for like a half of what it was worth but she ended up moving to texas and you know coming over to be by me and my kids here in texas and so she moved here and then literally the very next year the hurricane hit texas um, a few years back and completely destroyed her apartment at the time and destroyed everything she owned again and then finally my mom was like f this i'm moving to canada and now my mom lives in canada but yeah um mess but yeah so um disagree options open they released the report short stock tank yeah but what they're saying in the report is probably accurate though jedi jedi maybe it's not but I, I i do think that what they're saying in the report is probably at least somewhat true i'm not saying all of it but you know these short they target stocks for a reason it's kind of like this like people get mad when hedge funds short stocks right but usually hedge funds are shorting stocks for a very specific reason usually that reason is they're terrible companies and so there's a reason these hedge funds want to target these stocks and like i get it there's probably a lot of people stuck in cei here and i don't know if necessarily putting out this report is necessarily a good thing i think you just let it fail but at the same time i think there's also in one hand you got a company that was probably going to fail anyway and it's kind of talking a bunch of naive investors into throwing money at it when it's not really a good company and you know kind of causing all these investors to lose money and on the other hand you got a short uh you got a you got a firm that is intentionally influencing a stock on the negative side you know regardless of whether it would have failed originally you know there's certainly a reason for the downfall putting out that report and so you know i think there's two sides of it really i think uh, i could understand both sides uh in all honesty, Palantir. What do you think? Uh, what do you think? So we can look at Palantir here. Here's PLTR, and P uh, Palantir, even though it dipped a little bit, had a really good catalyst. Palantir struck a deal with the um, with the U.S. Army for 823 million. So it was an 823 million dollar deal with the U.S. Army, and so uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. There's a reason CEI got clapped, aka there's a reason why it was 30 cents before it started bouncing. Yeah, exactly. But again, you got a lot of people that are just stuck in it. Um, yeah, I mean, Kieran, uh, I got you, bro. Where, where, where did you say that? Let me see. Kieran said, so I'm a bit new to trading, but I trust your opinion. What do you recommend to get right now for quick gains? Nothing. I mean, listen, bro, here's the common logic. And I'm going to tell you this, Kieran. I'm going to tell you this and nobody else is probably going to tell you this. All right, but I'm going to tell you it, and it's the truth. And I have no reason to tell you this. I don't sell a course. I don't sell a service. I don't claim to be an expert. I don't claim to be a guru. Maybe I suck at trading, of course. But the reality is the shorter term the trading is, the faster the money is, the more risky it's ultimately going to be. The larger the risk, the larger the reward. And so nobody's able to tell you what you can make money on really quickly, Kieran. It's ultimately up to you. Nobody knows. So you might have people that claim they know, but in the end, they're usually just trying to talk you into pumping up their own positions. And so the reality is there's no such thing as quick money, quick, safe money in the market. There's no such thing. You know, if it's quick money, it's usually not safe. And if it's safe, it's usually not quick. And so understand that before you get involved. You're If you're new, you're going to have a million different people trying to pull you in a million different directions. The basic reality is trading is extremely difficult. A large majority of people lose money, and especially when it comes to short-term trading, a large, large majority of people lose money in short-term trading. The single easiest way to make money in the market is to value invest, which is basically just buying healthy companies and holding for 10 plus years and diversifying with that. Um, and day trading is incredibly risky, and you'll probably lose money at it. Uh, at the same time, though, I mean, I day trade every day, and I make money for the most part every day. Um so you can do it successfully you'll just probably lose money the entire time leading up to when you actually make money and so and that usually takes at least a few years you know i had a guy make a comment yesterday and he was like this guy's been trading for three years and he's only making twenty dollars a day you know number one i'm certainly making more than twenty dollars a day on average i would say my average day is probably fifty to a hundred dollars a day and I'm trading a $30,000 account guaranteed to be larger than the, than the account that old boy is trading that said that. 
Uh, but I'm trading safe here. I'm not in this to try to sell courses. I'm not in this to try to manipulate people into buying courses so that I can make money from selling courses. I'm in this to really scale my trading. And so with that said, you better believe I'm going to take it slow. I'm going to trade small and I'm going to grow slowly because that's the safest way to do it. And anybody telling you different has their own agenda in all honesty. Uh, but I hope that makes sense. Good luck. You know, good luck, brother. Yeah, facts. Um, hi, John. Doesn't CEI sound like AMC, BlackBerry, and GameStop? No. No, it doesn't. AMC was a very well-established company prior to any of that big move. So was GameStop, and so was BlackBerry. CEI is incredibly obscure. Nobody knows about it outside of penny stock community for the most part. And it's almost certainly getting manipulated prior to this by the insiders in the company. Um, and so, yeah, it's certainly not GameStop, BlackBerry, or AMC. It's just a different thing. You know, those were well-established companies that had a history and a name base and a user base and name space in the market prior to any of those big runs. CEI is obscure, unheard of company that basically is just riding the coattails of Viking energy. And so, you know, y'all make y'all's own decision, but like, it's just a different thing. It's a different game. All right, that is the best approach. Greed kills, small gains add up, 100%. I'm here to learn about day trading. I have 100 bucks. I want to make 200 or lose it. I'm completely comfortable losing it. I just want to learn, you know. Um, I mean, to be honest, my advice to you would be to paper trade. Uh, you could probably paper trade. Um, you know, you're, the, the, the issue with the what you just said, Kieran, is that that's a straight up gambling mentality, brother. And, you know, if you gamble in the market, you're just going to lose. It might be exciting. There might be a rush to it. But, like, you're just going to lose your money, brother. You know what I mean? And so, good luck. I mean, it's ultimately your decision. Um, but, you know, do your thing. Hey, what's up, too? Yeah, I gave him the info. Uh, where? Uh, here, let me pull up Discord. I haven't pulled up Discord yet. Hold on. All right, so we got two-way here. He said, from YBGR, the company has a history of incurring annual net operating losses. As of June 30th, the company had accumulated deficit of 327.7 mil. They did not generate any revenue. They financed primary, uh, They financed their company basically through offerings. Um, they have an active shelf, a hidden ATM from 2019 that is not used. It's easy to borrow. Looks like a liquidation play. And so if it's easy to borrow on a lot of brokers, there's a few different things here. Number one is that it could potentially squeeze up, um, which is, you know, certainly possible. Now, is it going to hold those gains? No. And if it does squeeze up, the, the reality is the company's almost certainly to hit an offering once they have a more favorable price of the stock to sell. Right. So it could squeeze up if it's ETB, but they do have an uh, offering potential on the table, as 2A said. And, um, yeah, so if this thing gets run up, it's almost certainly to hit an offering. Maybe not, but, you know, time will tell. But, yeah, be careful. Best thing I can say.
Um, don't be a greedy bag holder. Take on GTE. What is the play today? I'm not sure. Uh, Yeah, he said, the truth really is only be here with money you're willing to lose. Every loss takes as a lesson to be learned. Be a savage with smaller losses, but more winners. 100% be a gangster. Don't do greedy bag holder stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, as usual, BYGR, perfect pump and dump play. Yeah, uh, most likely what it is. Um, yeah. GTE looking solid. So we got a lot of people talking about GTE here. And, and GTE, I, I don't know. I mean, it moved up yesterday, but it's just not really my style of what I would usually get involved with here uh, for GTE. Uh, the reason for that is just because it's got a very large float of almost 300 million. Um, the, the range is not huge, but it is moving big percentages. Um, so market cap of 274 million roughly since it's about a dollar a share. Uh, and I'm looking to see what happened here with the company, why GTE is up. I uh, see changes to beneficial ownership of director. Um, this is Grand Tierra Energy Corporation. Does anybody know why this is up? Oh, Tilray is another one that we could pay attention to as well. TLRY. Uh, a lot of people hype it up Tilray too. The just range is a little small. I used to really trade the VWAP patterns on this one a lot. And I kind of see why because usually it trends fairly nicely, honestly, for TLRY. So maybe we'll get involved with this one a little bit more too. Um, uh, Kieran, the people here are good traders and John will teach you a lot. Trading takes time to get it right and become profitable. You have to experience things to learn from them. Yeah, exactly. Wake me up when something happens in the market. All right, brother. Uh, Bark, long-term play. NVIDIA, nice short-term play. Um, GTE looking solid. It's looking all right. Uh, yeah, Bark, if it's a penny stock, I'm not messing with this thing, man. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, long-term, this thing looks horrible. <laughs> no offense to you, bro, but I don't know. This, this is the thing I don't understand. In any world, how could anybody say this looks good? You know what I mean? Like, in any world... How could anybody say this looks good better? You know what I mean? You know, that's what I don't understand. It doesn't look good, bro. No offense. You know, I get it. You might be holding a Tyler, but it looks terrible, bro. The, the chart looks horrible. Maybe it's overextended on the downside. I guess that could be considered good, but just not not something I like about it. Um, Small Direct Club, SDC. Small Direct Club is interesting. It really ripped yesterday. Um. So it really did pop up yesterday. Uh, so it's up to 560s, 560s for SDC. Uh, Facebook is going to get busted up. Uh, maybe. I mean, here's Facebook. Facebook bounced a little bit after the big drop it did yesterday. So maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? Uh, Mm. I mean, lysergic. I think if we're looking at this objectively here for Bark, um, regardless of any type of technical pattern here, it's about if he said invest, right? He said it's an investing company. In any term of investing sense, this looks to be a pretty rough looking chart, man. I mean, it's obviously downward trending. Very obviously. It's one of the most obvious downward trends we've seen in years. In the last year, it's gone from $19.50, basically $20, back down to under $6.50. So that's a rough looking chart, man. Um, uh, the last year has not been the worst time of the market. I mean, if we look at the SPY itself over the last year, uh, you know, the SPY itself is obviously very strong over the last year. So, I mean, it's certainly not the worst part of the market. Now, what's up, Trellis? I'm hoping to graduate to a big boy account by the end of October, waiting on a few bank deposits to clear and then redeposit into a trading account. Hey, good luck, brother. Bitcoin? VIRX, maybe? 
And again, guys, I mean, I hope you guys understand. I might not like the stock you talk about, but it doesn't mean, you know, you have to hate me. Um, I'm just giving you my own subjective opinion on it. Bitcoin ripped up, guys. Bitcoin ripping up, breaking highs right now, guys. Look at Bitcoin here. Bitcoin is up to 52.615. Um, so Bitcoin is absolutely flying up right now. Just flying up, making big rips here, big moves. Check it out. Um, and again, Benzinga, guys. Benzinga has crypto scanners as well. So Benzinga does have crypto scanners. And so again, if you want to check out Benzinga, great way to use... Uh, a great way to show support for the channel. Check out Benzinga. Super useful. Uh, great scans. Super thorough data, too. So if you check out Benzinga here, they also have a free trial. So with Benzinga, you can literally try them out for free without putting in a credit card number for Benzinga for two weeks. You can try them out for free. I'm pretty sure without a credit card number. And Benzinga is what I'm using to find a lot of this data here. This is the more thorough part of Benzinga. Um, check, it, check this out. So this is the full Benzinga page, and there's so much different stuff. I can create workspaces for pre-market, you know, news, look at details of companies, look at calendars, look at insider data, look at watch list data. You know what I mean? It's just got very in-depth analysis of companies through Benzinga. And again, you can try it out for free. There's the link in the chat. Back to your poll last week. I guess we should have bought the dip. Hey. People were hating. People were voting against it. You got some people that just hate crypto for whatever reason, right? It's like they hate crypto, but crypto has been putting in some of the most obvious gains over the last few years of any asset or security. Um, you know, and I, I, for those asking how to buy or sell Bitcoin, you can use BitGet. This is BitGet right here. You can buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, Sheep, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. You could also short or go long in crypto. So if we look at unified futures here, you can go long or short in crypto. And so you can go long or short on any of these with leverage. You can also copy trade. So if you're like me and you're not the best crypto trader short term, you can literally copy trade for trade other profitable traders and let them make money for you. All right. A lot of these guys have very high accuracy rates, 85% here for MROK. This guy's got 84%. Let's check him out. Let's, let's delve deeper into what this dude's doing over here. But yeah, a lot of people can um, find value in this guy. So check them out. Um, but yeah, you can literally copy these traders, literally trade for trade and see which ones are the most profitable. We're going to look into this guy's accuracy rate real quick to see how profitable he really is. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. If you have any recommendations for copy traders that you use, let me know. All right, so let's look into these guys here, guys. Let's look into these guys. Uh, this guy's got 84% accuracy rate. So this is how we check into him. All right, so he's mostly a shorter, it looks like here. But he's making pretty solid percentage gains. These little losses are not good, um, which means he's kind of averaging to positions here. But looking back at the history, he's been pretty profitable going both long and short. His problem is that he's putting in a little bit too large of losses when he does lose. And so we're going to move on from him. We've got this person here. Uh, that's made over 4,000%. And it looks to be pretty solid gains here. Uh, long on Ethereum, long on Bitcoin. Um, great gains. Okay, this one's really solid. Wow. Wow, look at these gains that this guy's making. And he's taking it both long and short, which is honestly pretty crazy. Look at this. Wow. This guy is super profitable, man. This guy doesn't lose barely at all. And when he does lose, it's small. Now, there's a big 152 percent loss um so yeah we might follow it oh wait wait okay so this is a trade averager so this guy averages into positions he caught it by looking at 1500 percent loss 1800 percent loss and i bet you he's sitting on bags of losses okay so this is guy this guy's just averaging in and never cutting losses so let's keep looking here guys let's keep looking if you guys have any recommendations like i said let me know i like these guys this guy's got 78 percent accuracy let's see how good he really is all right we're going back losses all right, so this is about reasonable. He's hedging, it looks like, a little bit here, too, which I don't mind. Pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Big losses there, so no. Too big of losses relative to the win, so we're going to keep on moving here. This guy's got 90% accuracy. 91%. Let's check him out. All right, so great. Good. Fine. Wait. Okay, small losses, which is good. He's not trading super actively, either which is good. The problem is, let's see what he's stuck in. Yeah, so this is the problem, and they just sit in stuck positions, and they just sit in these positions, and they refuse to exit. So let's find somebody else here. How about Natural School J? All right, so he's not sitting into any bags. Small gains. This is a scalper here. 
43%. Okay, not too bad when you consider his gains. His problem is this one loss here, but he's cutting losses, which is good. So this guy doesn't look that bad. He's made 71%, about 3,600 bucks in profit. So we'll consider him Natural School J. We also have got Stub here with 100% accuracy rate. And you might think you want to try these guys with 100% accuracy rate, but a lot of the time they're just averaging in to their positions here. And so let's look at under dot here under dot. He's got about 18 spots left green. What I want to see is small losses and big wins. And I think that's what we see here. Small losses. Okay. Wow. That guy was really profitable. All right. So this guy under dot impressive. All right. We're going to follow this guy here under dot. We're going to follow him. And uh, we'll follow this guy under dot. And again, if you want to check out BitGit. We're going to cop. We're going to follow him. We're going to give him a 30% stop loss since he doesn't really take many losses over 30% or 40%. We'll give him 40%. We'll give him a maximum follow of $500 and we'll give him a fixed ratio. So we're going to follow him with a 0.2 to 1 ratio, 0.3 to 1. Uh, there we go. All right. So we're going to follow that guy. And we haven't really traded, copy traded a ton lately, but we're going to follow that guy and we'll see how that goes. Uh, and we'll let you know. So we're, we're going to test him out. We're also following Trader Zhang right now. But again, yeah, so you can use BitGit in Canada, Yusha. Here's the link if anybody wants to check it out. Here's the link. Um, again, on BitGit, you can do all this stuff here. And I, again, I'm testing it out. Uh, I have multiple different accounts here on BitGit. But again, the way you do it is you just, if, if you want to sign up and deposit money into BitGit, you sign up and you just go to buy crypto at the top right. If you go to buy crypto at the top right, you say, hey, I want to buy $400 worth of Bitcoin using a Visa card or using a MasterCard or using Google Pay or using Apple Pay. And you can, you just click purchase at the bottom right and boom, you'll get your money within two to 10 minutes. And yeah, it's super easy. Uh, BitGit is usually uh, uh, accessible in Canada, Yusha. I think it's not accessible for specific territories. I think it's like Quebec and something else. But look at Bitcoin flying up here, guys. It's at 5290s, 53,000 almost. Almost a $53,000 a, a coin. Not too bad. BTBT testing. Yeah, Bitcoin's flying up. And so what we should watch is other Bitcoin related stocks start to move up with it. So like Bitcoin is flying up, but we want to watch other Bitcoin related stocks to see if it moves with it here. Like that's what we really want to see. What chain name do I use? What do you mean? Chain name for what? For depositing, Kieran? It depends on what you're depositing. So if you're depositing USDT, you usually want to pick the ERC20 chain. Um, you want to make sure you have it lined up right because if you try to deposit... If you try if you try to deposit anything using the TRC20 chain it's usually it, but then you have the other option selected as the ERC20 your money will be lost and so usually you got to make sure the chain name lines up correctly um All right, so yeah, here's BTBT, and BTBT is flying with Bitcoin's volatility as well. Here's Bitcoin up to 52.8, 53,000. Let's see if Bitcoin breaks it here, guys. Bitcoin's flying up. Look at ACER popping up with this as well. So ACER is moving too. Uh, and we'll see what happens, guys. We'll see what happens. Uh, All right, so we got LMFA popping up as well. Look at LMFA. LMFA, it's up to five dollars a share. All right, so we got LMFA popping up. We got NXTP. NXTP trying to move. We got Sava up there to 59s. We got ACER trying here too. ACER trying to get over threes. CEI. 
dropping down to 124 right now, 124. But yeah, we're watching ACR. We got V, uh, what was it? V Y G R. That is up to 360s here. Let's see if it holds the VWAP now for VYGR, uh, right around 360s. Let's see if it actually holds that level. All right, team. Um, All right, guys. Um, Are you a full-time trader? Mm, it depends on what you mean by that, man. I mean, do I live solely off of my trading profits? No. Uh, I don't claim to. I don't claim to be an expert or a guru. I mean, the channel's called Beginner Trading. Um... Uh, on your app, small though, but make it able to use split screen mode. I'll check it out. Yeah, don't hang out here with hitting that like button, guys. Yeah, for sure, guys. Hit that like button. Hit that uh, subscribe button as, as well. Dude is a guru. Sava is ripping. More expensive for sure. Yeah, we're looking at Sava. Because Sava uh, Sciences. And C-A or S-A-V-A is absolutely flying up here. S-A-V-A. Flying up here. Cassava Sciences. Um, they initiated phase three efficacy trial of simulofoam for the treatment of patients with Alzheimer's. So, uh, yeah, so they did initiate coverage on, um, on, uh, or they, they, um, they did phase three trial, uh, looking for efficacy for their Alzheimer's drug. Top 3% of gurus. He's very honest. Hey, we try. Uh. I love this place. I'm hoping Hood will bounce off the standard deviation channel. Hey, good luck, Daniel. Um, I was still looking at the AMC float. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to be a full-time trader or live off of your profits? And if so, what would it take for you to do it? Uh, I mean, of course I want to. Number one, I'm going to preface everything I'm about to say. With if you're trying to get me to sign up for any type of service that you offer, I'm never going to do that. Just to preface it. I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but it's certainly a possibility. So just a heads up beforehand. But yeah, man, obviously I want to be a full-time trader. Um, I just, I'm not in any rush, man. And I'm trying to take it slow because the reality is the more you try to rush it, the more you end up losing. I can show you my trader view stats. Like I've been very open about my trading view stats. Uh, we did lose yesterday, but it was pretty small. Um, but yeah, I mean, if we look at my trader view stats, we're doing okay in the last 30 days. We're not making huge sums of money or anything like that. Uh, but it's crazy. The culture nowadays will tell you that this is, this is, uh, they'll act like me making 700, $800 a month with a $30,000 account. And usually in the last few months, I've been making about 1200 bucks a month, right? But they act like trading that is small for a $30,000 account. If I can make consistently two grand a month, that's like 80% a year. If hedge funds could do that, they would, you know what I mean? And so 
uh, people could say I trade small and that's fine. I think most people are just brainwashed into trading too large because they're trying to get rich quick trading stocks, which is not really possible like that. Uh, it's possible, but you got to take a huge astronomical amount of risk and it's just not worth it. Uh, but yeah, we got LMFA popping up here. LMFA is moving up. Let's see if we got a catalyst here for this one as well. Um, so yeah, LM funding sees 5k mining machines expected to generate 1.2 thousand bitcoins per year beginning in the second quarter of 2022 is the catalyst. So again, this is according to Benzenga here and LM funding sees 5k mining machines expected to generate 1.2 bitcoins, 1.2 thousand bitcoins per year beginning in the second quarter of 2022. And so they're ripping up because of that. I'll drop this catalyst here so you can see it. Um, So LMFA, they see 5K mining machines expected to generate 1.2 thousand Bitcoins per year beginning in the second quarter of 2022, according to Benzinga. Um, Hmm. All right, guys, uh, LMFA. How do you pull up the Bitcoin chart on TOS? Uh, you got to look at Bitcoin futures. So you put a slash BTC. And it'll, it'll pull up the Bitcoin chart. And here's the Bitcoin chart. It looks solid, man. It looks solid. Uh, uh, we have a Discord, Tyler. Join it, man. Here it is right here. Yeah, if y'all want to join our Discord, here's the link, team. Join it. Chat. Be my guest. What's up, Daniel? Hey, good morning, brother. Um, yeah, there's the Discord right there. Um, all right, guys. What are you watching the most today, team? Let me do a poll in the chat and we'll see what we get. Now, let me do a poll. Like I said, let me know what you're watching the most today, guys. Um. So let us know. Here's the poll. The question is, what are you watching the most this morning? Can't you just throw 30K into your account and double your profit? I could, but I would rather not use up that much equity and slowly make money with it and get used to trading larger instead of just adding the size. It doesn't really work like that. Like you could say, oh, add another 30K to it and just take twice the size. But my emotions are going to be completely different trading twice the size. It's going to be completely different. I could trade larger sizing with the account I have. I mean, I've got a hundred and seventy thousand dollar. I got. Let me see how much buying power I actually have. I have. Uh, I have one hundred fifty thousand in buying power on TOS, right? Uh, one hundred fifty thousand, basically. And so I have plenty of buying power to use. Um, it's just you know, it, it's a slow process, man. It's a slow process. Like the more you make per trade the more you're ultimately risking and so you know we're gonna take it slow bitcoin did break over fifty three thousand, guys there's the break bitcoin just ripped over fifty three thousand here fifty three thousand for bitcoin this is gonna influence a lot of things on the upside as well guys a lot of things on the upside uh, all right so we got the poll going we asked people what are they watching the most this morning penny stocks vygr lmfa acer large cap stocks like palantir facebook crypto with bitcoin sheep ethereum etc let us know guys 43 percent said they're watching penny stocks this morning but you can also see bitcoin is flying it's up to fifty three thousand. let's see if we can actually hold over that level uh, here's lmfa 
pulling back to 520 and really not that bad. So LMFA is not looking that bad anymore. Um, you know, really not looking that bad. So we got LMFA on the move here. We got VYGR. VYGR is pulling that cup and handle breakout pattern that we always talk about. And it looks good, man. It looks good. So let's see what we get with this one as well. But it's not looking bad. We also have MMAT, which put in some nice moves yesterday. Kind of pulling back some. Let's see if we can hold $5 for MMAT here. So here's $5. Let's see if we can actually hold this spot right here. So here's MMAT. Let's see if we can hold $5 right there and see if it sustains that $5 level. Um... Sheeb still ripping up big, uh, guys. Sheeb still ripping up pretty big. Um, we got LMFA on the move. We got... Uh, for the more knowledgeable crypto guys, can you mine Shiba? Shiba? Uh, so it depends on if it's proof of work or proof of stake. There's two types of coins. There's proof of work, which means it's mineable, like Ethereum, Bitcoin. And then there's proof of stake, like Cardano, which you don't mine. And it's more kind of organized like a conventional company. Um, for Shiba, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, so yeah, so it's... Uh, It's on the Ethereum network. Um, so yeah, it's proof of work. They're transitioning to a proof of stake though. But yeah, you can mine it. Yeah, so Shiba Inu coins can also be mined through a mining pool that has a minimum video random access memory of six gigabytes. Miners are rewarded with Shiba coins for verifying blocks of transactions to the Shiba Inu protocol on the Ethereum network. As more miners compete, uh, the process becomes more difficult. So yeah, you can mine it. MMA had has two good pieces of random unknowing news the past few days and barely moved from it. Seems to us not going to lie. Um, yeah, we can look at MMAT's news. Uh, so they're going to present at two investor conferences in October. They also completed an acquisition of Nanotech Security Corporation, and that dropped yesterday for MMAT. Uh... They also had a contract via the U.S. Fed Reserve on Friday. They named that. They were awarded the Lux Innovator of the Year. Uh, and they also dropped an active stake thing uh, in the last few days. So we'll see what happens with MMAT. It's popping and moving some. Um, but uh, let's see if it holds over five. I, I mean, I think you got to look at the broader sense of MMAT. The daily chart doesn't really look that bad. You know what I mean? Like we had people talking about Bark today. Just to show you the huge difference between the Bark long-term chart and MMATs. Like this is a company that's trying, but it's somewhat doing decent. Um, as opposed to other companies that are just failing here. We got VLN. What's Bitcoin still doing? All right, so Bitcoin popped over 53,000 for a split second and then came right back down here, guys, right back down. So uh, Well, yeah, I mean, it's not that it's not accurate, Larry. Um, it's not that this isn't accurate. It's that there's arbitrage on multiple different platforms. So it's like, it's not that it's not accurate. It's that platforms show different things, right? There's sometimes a lag in between platforms. So like we can look at Bitcoin here, it's up to 52.895 thousand. But if we look at BitGit, for instance, here, and we pull up BitGit, and we look at Bitcoin on BitGit, you know, it's currently at 52.396. And so really, 
these are similar. It looks, to be honest, that futures here on TOS is a little bit slow because we can see 52 or 53,000. Or no, maybe it's a little bit long. Maybe it's just a different price. But yeah, my point is, here's 53. And so it's just arbitrage. There's a little bit difference in the price. And that's a, that's the same with all platforms. Like there's going to be a difference in price in most of them. All right, so here's LMFA. It's holding 520s or trying to at least. Yeah, BitGit has the accurate price, as does all the other ones for sure. Right, exactly, Frank. It's the range and the time frame is the most important thing. So we got VYGR on the move. VYGR. Let's see what the poll is doing here. All right, guys, out of 63 votes, y'all vote on the poll, 70 votes. Um, vote on the poll right now. We got 74 votes. Let's get over 100 at least. 75 votes. Again, are you watching penny stocks, large caps, crypto more? Let us know, guys. Vote on the poll. It's right now in the chat. Wait, you can't use BitGit in the U.S.? Yeah, you can. You can use BitGit in the U.S. Where you read that, Kieran? I'm in the U.S. and I use BitGit. All right, ACR rejected at the VWAP here. Uh, we're still looking at VYGR. And this one flying over these highs, guys. VYGR is absolutely ripping up over these highs here. BYGR just broke pre-market highs here all the way up to 390, 392 is at its highs now in pre-market. Make money today. It's your kind of day. Good luck. Hey, thanks, Larry. I appreciate that, brother. Uh, yes, I've been using BitGit for a while now. Yeah, for sure. I think some states don't allow it. Uh, maybe so, but I know Texas does, and I can't even use Binance where I am, but... Uh... Yeah, New York is PETA for crypto traders. Not sure about BitGit, though. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of how it goes. New York is weird, you know. Uh, but yeah, look at VYGR here. The question I have for you guys is, do you think this holds throughout the day? Do you think VYGR holds throughout the day and why? Why or why not? Do you think it holds over, we're going to say 350s today. I think 350s is a big level. So do you think it holds over 350 today? All right, so VYGR breaks pre-market highs. Do you think it holds over 350 today? Why or why not? Let us know in the chat. Let's see what everybody's answers. Probably not. I can't be bothered, but everybody I know trading crypto is on a VPN and jumping through hoops. I know, and that's honestly one of the great things about BitGit is that BitGit allows US signups. Like that's the big thing. Like that's that's what honestly made me accept the sponsorship from BitGit because they are a sponsor of the channel. But one of the reasons is that they allow US users and they go through KYC verified. So you can literally get KYC verified on BitGit, which a lot of other futures platforms and crypto platforms generally don't allow you to. And so they've gone through the necessary steps of getting regulated in the US and they're copy trading super dope and they allow you to do a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, and you can trade crypto futures. You can trade Bitcoin. I can short Bitcoin on this platform too, which is really cool. Like if I go to Unified Futures here, I can go up to Bitcoin and literally short this if I wanted to. And so, you know, it's really useful. It's really useful. And again, check it out here. Uh, of course, I'm biased in their favor because I get a cut, but check them out. Here's the link. BTBT is still going strong. No oil will drop as most pre-market highs never hold during the day on average. Yeah, you're probably right. Everything will drop at the open like every day. No, because it's a terrible company. <laughs> sound like me, bro. You sound like me. Uh, all right, so yeah, we got VYGR. Rip it up here. Let's see if it holds. CEI continues to drop down to 120. Uh, LMFA is popping up at the VWAP here. So here's LMFA. It's at 535s. 535s. Uh, so we'll see if that holds and that continues, of course.
Hey, John, I never used stop loss before. I just tried to set a stop and it automatically set a limit price. What is limit? What's the difference? Thanks. Uh, a limit price can be either direction. A limit price means that it needs to fill you at that specific price or better. Um, a stop loss is an order that will get you out of the trade if it hits a certain price. And so there's the, that's the differences, really. Um, so yeah, Mikey, I'm going to preface this like Mikey says, can you quickly show a beginner strategy, a simple beginner strategy I can use? So yes, I'm going to preface this entire thing with listen, I am not an I am not an expert professional trader. I cannot guarantee that any of the strategies I show you will work in the market. You always got to test them and trade them yourself. This is purely entertainment purposes only and I can't guarantee any of these setups or strategies will work, of course. Um, but with that said, a very simple strategy you can use in both penny stocks and large cap stocks is just trading these crossovers um, over the VWAP. Now, you don't have to use moving averages, but you can use the VWAP, and the VWAP is the volume weighted average price. And the way you can ultimately attack some of these moves is you can, we can take a look at a stock. What ran yesterday, guys? Like, uh, I'm just going to pull up AMD because it's the easiest, but you can use this strategy in both penny stocks and large cap stocks as well. But the, the way you approach this pre uh, strategy, the easiest strategy is just to buy pullbacks to the VWAP. And so you want to the goal really for this is to wait to see if you can find strength somewhere. Right. You want to find something that other traders are going to pay attention to. And so when you got this really nice move here and you got this really strong bullish open and then you finally pull back to the VWAP level, a lot of people are going to bet that this trend is going to continue. And so buying on the pullback to the VWAP and then giving yourself like a, t a tight stop loss level, maybe at this low under here or like maybe at a, a nice confirmed half dollar level or whatever you want to use. Right. Or giving yourself a previous high of the day level like this even could work. Uh, maybe 75 is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick the quarter dollar level of 75. And that way, if I enter here at 103 and then I get out at 75, my risk is 25 cents, right? If I set, if I take profit at the high of the day right here, then my reward target is going to be about 70 cents. We'll call it 50 cents to be safe. And so then I got a two to one reward to risk ratio. My risk is 25 cents. My reward is 50 cents. And so as long as this thing works at least 50% of the time, which I think it certainly will, then I'm going to make money in this trade. Um, now, again, I can't guarantee it works for you, but this is called a VWAP bounce. We've got a lot of good content on VWAP bounces. So let me know if you want me to drop a link here on some good content on, about the VWAP bounce. Um, all right. So Gerson says, I'd like to know if you are if you have a portfolio long term. And if you do, why not create a service? You are an expert and we trust on you. Um, you know, I'm against the word expert. I think we're always learning and we're always growing. Um, as for long-term investing, it's not really my style or niche, if you will. Like I, I trade some stuff long-term, but I genuinely think that you don't need me and that I don't need to offer a service for that. I think that most people can figure it out themselves without needing to pay for a service. And so it's one of those things where it's like, I'd rather just give it to you guys for free. And again, some of that is for selfish reasons as well. Like I can give it away for free and I grow faster because of it, you know? So it's like, there's pros and cons, but, but yeah, I mean, at this point in time, I've, uh, I'm, I'm not going to offer a service or a, a course because I don't need to, I'd rather just give everything away for free and let people learn themselves and not claim to be an expert and really try to grow my system myself without the pressure of being an expert or selling courses or having to, having to account to anybody how well or bad I do in trading. But I appreciate the five dollars, brother. Thank you, man. I, I certainly appreciate it, brother. Um, all right, guys. So we got a few questions here. Uh, but yeah, thank you for that five dollars, brother. What's up, cats? Hey, good morning. Hope you're well. Uh, my four thousand dollar shib is now thirteen hundred in one month. Oh, thirteen thousand. I was gonna say, yeah. Um, how is gambling different than day trading? Um, well, it, it depends on what you define as gambling. Gambling is a broad term. You know, it can be defined in a number of different ways. Um, if you if you define gambling as betting money with unfavorable odds, then trading 
can or can't be gambling. It depends. If you have favorable probabilities like investing long term or if, with my scalping system, then it's not gambling because I have favorable odds to succeed. Now, if you define gambling as risking money without necessarily you know, knowing if you're going to get it back, well, then everything's gambling. You know what I mean? So it really just depends on what you define as it. Um, hey, what's up? What's up, Mo? Hope you're doing good, bro. Uh, yeah, in New York has a small list of licensed approved crypto trading platforms that have the blessing. Yeah, for sure. Um, hey, hey, I appreciate you, Mon. Hey, thank you, brother. Appreciate the support, bro. Um, but yeah, I mean, you guys know me. I try to just be real with you guys. Like, and I think you guys know that. Um, like, we might grow slower. Like, listen, if I told you guys a bunch of nonsense and then just tried to tell you guys what you wanted to hear, I'd probably grow way faster. Or if I only promoted one specific stock and then I just kind of relied on all the bag holders of that one specific stock to pump me up, then I'd probably grow way faster. You know, but I'd rather be honest and tell people how I truly feel. And, and this is how I really feel. And this is how I really trade. And I'd rather just be honest with people instead of having to constantly mislead people, even if it means I grow slower, you know, even if it means I make less, even if it means that my channel uh, grows slower or has less viewers, that's fine because I'm, I'd rather just be real and honest with people. And I hope you guys appreciate that because that's what you should want to hear. Uh, Hey, you as well. Um, you as well, Jason. I'm going to get out of here to go to work. I hope you all make a crap ton of money today. Hey, you too, bro. Yeah, we're watching BTBT here. Um, and BTBT is up there, man. Hey, this is just rising with Bitcoin, though. So this is directly influenced by Bitcoin because it's a mining stock. And if you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin popping up usually means that BTBT, Mara, Riot, um, Any, Hut, they're all going to move up in sympathy with it. And so, you know, uh, bullish in bit strength in Bitcoin means strength in these mining stocks. And that's certainly included on, you know, BTBT as well. Um, again, though, we got VYGR breaking pre-market highs. Uh, it's pulling back now. This is the big level. So if we're looking at a pullback spot, this is a this is the level that I think the most people are going to be watching here. This 377 level. It's the previous pre-market high. And so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Thanks, John. I only wish odds were less subjective in trading. I believe odds are only subjective. I mean, yeah, it's it's up to the subject to pick out a strategy. And so that's going to depend on what the odds are. But I mean, everything's subjective. Subjective just means opinion based. Though odds can be opinion based, I guess. But like the truth is, it's up to the trader. You know, it's up to the trader. Uh, it's up to the subject, if you will. Uh, Samsung may be worth a watch today. News said they are likely to report best quarterly earnings in three years. Hey, we'll check it out. What's the Samsung stock? Is it Sung? Samsung. I don't know if I've ever traded Samsung. I didn't even know they had a stock in all honesty. Um, if they do, what's the symbol? But yeah, here's what, here's VYGR. And look at where we bounce, guys. Listen, I told you guys if we were going to bounce, this is going to be where it was. And that's exactly where it bounced. So we'll see if it continues here, guys. But uh, yeah, here's 378. Previous pre-market high. Bounced directly off of that. SINT. The SINT popped and then it faded right back down. So, nah. Here's LMFA trying to hold at the VWAP level. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, the difference is any bit farm BCTM all went up 5%, BTBT went up 50% or 40%. Uh yeah, so BTBT flying up here. So definitely stronger than these other ones. Um uh, certainly. All right guys, so uh you are transparent and clearly not pumping stocks. Thanks for the education. Hey man, happy to help bro. That is retracing to the previous 13 to 15 dollars that it was when Bitcoin was above the 50k September 5th. SSNGY for Samsung. Yeah, it's not even showing up on my end. What's up, Mr. David? Yeah, who that, bro? 
Even though the Saints lost to the Jets. Saints should be ashamed of themselves losing to the Jets. At least the Bengals are winning, man. That's the that's that's my savior in football this year is the Bengals. We got Joey Burrow and Jamar Chase over there doing big things on the Bengals. So at least I got some football team to root for. Uh we got um VYGR did bounce again directly off of that 378 level we talked about. Whether it continues is, you know, nobody anybody's guess. Um, but we are holding over 378 for now. And that's a great sign here, of course. That's a great sign. Oh, yeah, the Giants, not the Jets. I mean the Giants, sorry. Uh, that's who I meant. New York and all their freaking football teams. The, the Giants is what I mean. And boo. Boo. Um, anyways. Yeah, we'll see what happens with SINT. We're watching this here. And then, of course, Bitcoin is still flying up here. Let's look at other charts to see where this is at. But TOS is showing Bitcoin at 53.26 thousand. And let's look at what is that on BitGet uh, and elsewhere here. So here's Bitcoin absolutely flying up here. It's up to, it got up to almost 53, but it still hasn't hit 53 on BitGet, which a lot of people are saying is the most accurate price for Bitcoin here. And so we'll see if it continues. Spinal implants. All right, so yeah, Bitcoin flying up. Uh, main top watches. We're going to go ahead and build our watch list. VYGR. VYGR up there to 390s, getting ready to test these highs again. Do you think this continues, guys? Do you think this continues? Let us know. 52.7 is strong resistance. Yeah, for sure. Um, Packers don't look that great this year. What are the Packers records now? I guess the Packers are doing good. They're three and one. If AMC doesn't rip today, I'm out. Hey, well, good luck, bro. Um, All right, so here goes VYGR pushing up testing highs here. Here's AMC. All right, team. Hi, everyone. Good luck to all AU as well, man. What's with the spy? We can look at the market news today. What's up, James? Yeah, Buffalo is looking pretty solid. Uh, Allen over there on the bills, man. He's killing it. Um. We got LMFA, we've got ACER, we've got uh, VYGR, we've got uh, TENX, BRQS showing up a little bit. Uh, BTBT is certainly on the list today. BTBT is absolutely flying today, guys. Flying. Huge moves. And again, what do y'all think about the CEI short report that dropped? Do y'all agree with it or not? Here's BTBT absolutely flying this morning. All right, guys, we got about 23 minutes into the market open, 23 minutes. I think the market is going to go down today. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and look at the stock market here, guys. So we're going to go ahead and look at the SPY and see if we got any catalyst uh, dropping here on the SPY and see what's going on. Um, you know, let me see if we can find uh, – they used to drop an ETF preview somewhere. They stopped. Um, all right, so – 
USA ADP non-farm payroll numbers dropped or non-farm employment change for September came in at 568,000 versus 428,000 expected uh, prior revised to 374 to 340K. Um, Palantir is the big talk of the town today, to be honest, PLTR. Palantir has been getting really hyped up this morning. Um, they Palantir hit a deal with the U.S. government for like $823 million. I believe it was Palantir that did. We also got a lot of people following Tilray. Um, you know, it had 382 mentions. Uh, or Yeah, so 382 mentions on Wall Street Bets Forum. And so we're looking at a lot of these other ones here. Um, Camber Energy is tanking down, of course. Smile Direct Club is looking at... Uh, Palantir had the positive catalyst from, I believe, the deal with the U.S. government. Uh, so, yeah, the company announced it won an $823 million contract for intelligence data. Fabric and Analytics Foundation for the Capability Drop 2 program. So, basically, an $823 million deal with the U.S. government for Palantir. Uh, let me know what you're watching at the opening bell, guys. Uh, let me know what you're watching here. Uh, it should be an interesting day. I'm hoping we get some good stuff. But again, let me know what you're watching the most here today, guys. The SPY is down slightly. Uh, you know, we got VYGR, LMFA, Acer. We got large cap stocks. Uh, vote on the poll. We got 153 votes. Looks like 49% of you are watching penny stocks. Um, but we got VYGR flying up there to 390s here, guys. 390s for VYGR. Huge rip up. Absolutely huge move up here, guys. Look at this move. Uh, for VYGR. Absolutely ridiculous move up. And again, I'm finding these stocks using Benzinga. Benzinga does have a deal right now, guys, where you can do their free trial, their two-week free trial, completely free. Um, and you can try out Benzinga scanners completely free using their free trial. I don't even think you need a credit card number. You might, but I'm pretty sure you can sign up and get the free trial for 100% free and not 100% sure though. Uh, so check out Benzinga. I'll post the link here if you want to help support your boy and check them out. Be sure to sign up. Take advantage of that free trial they got going on. And uh, yeah, here's the link. Yo, they're trying to pass the Moore Act, which would decriminalize cannabis federally. They need to, but honestly, I'm not super excited that they... I, I'm not super convinced that they're actually going to do it. Um, you know, like, honestly, there's a lot of talk about it. To be honest, for me, I'm not much... Uh, I'm not a big political guy. You know, like, I don't like... I dislike both sides of the political spectrum, if you will. Right? But if the left does not... If the left does not pass that, after all the talk, I'm going to look down on them and think that they're being shady. Because it's time to pass it. They need to pass the MORE Act. Um, and who knows if they actually will or not, but it's time, you know, if they really want to help, it can help with so much stuff. Like if they genuinely want to help, like uh, studies have shown that it negatively affects minority communities. And so if they actually want to help those communities, they should pass that. Um, plus not, not even that, but just for the rest of the world, you know? Yeah. No credit card is needed for the Benzinga trial. So yeah, y'all check it out guys. Check it out. Um, and again, I'm really not trying to argue about politics, of course. I, I, I don't really pick a side. I dislike both. Um, but that's something that needs to be done, you know. Yeah, so you go to that link on Benzinga and you just click start your free trial. Yeah, BTBT is interesting. Yeah, war on drugs has been a major failure for sure. Uh, uh, well, it depends on what plan you choose, Michael. Um, Bitcoin just smashed over 53K. Yeah, Bitcoin is flying here, guys. Look at this. Absolute craziness. Wow. Wow. What happened here with Bitcoin? Look at Bitcoin flying, guys. Let me see if we can find out what happened here. Bitcoin is flying. Okay. Um, let's see if we can figure out what's going down. You got a bunch of people working with big banks trying to discredit any Bitcoin thing that's going on. And then you got talking points in the market that just repeat the talking points of the big banks. Um, all right. Let's see what's going down, guys. I don't see any recent news that just dropped, but does anybody know why this is happening? Anybody know why Bitcoin's flying up like it is? This is a huge move up to 54,000 for Bitcoin, guys. 54,000. Ridiculous move. 
Uh, and yeah, watch BTPT go up in sympathy with Bitcoin. So watch BTPT, any, all these different ones go up in sympathy. There's BTPT. It's up to 1150s. Look at any, um, look at all these different Bitcoin moves. You can, you can, and this is how you trade sympathy trades, guys. This is how you get involved with sympathy moves. So you got Mara, Riot flying up on Bitcoin's positive movement. And so if you can see what it does and then follow suit, a lot of people are taking advantage of that. LMFA is dumping down. We got AMC on the move up. AMC is at 36.40, so we're watching that. Hundreds of millions of shorts were opened, and now they're all bleeding. Yeah, for sure. Um, they made a bear trap. You, usually, this is like a, the Bitcoin market, man. Look at Bitcoin flying up here, guys. This is crazy. Up to 55,000. What's the lifetime highs for Bitcoin? Isn't it like 64,000 or something like that? So the Bitcoin lifetime high, wow, look at that, 55s, 0.444s, that is crazy. Yeah, the lifetime high is 65,500. Um, so crazy Bitcoin volatility, guys. And again, if you want to take advantage of that, you can buy Bitcoin, you can buy Ethereum, you can invest, you can trade crypto futures, you can copy trade other profitable traders on BitGit. And so take advantage of it, guys, if you want to. You can see all these other profitable traders that are trading these cryptocurrencies. And if you're not confident in your own trading, you can literally check out their stats and see stat for stat who's the best trader on this platform. See their percentage gains, their accuracy rate, all that stuff. If you sign up, they do allow US users. You can fund your account by just clicking buy crypto at the top right and saying, hey, I want to buy $500 with Bitcoin using Visa, MasterCard, Google Pay. And then you click purchase at the bottom. You can also paper trade if you want to practice practice crypto trading and start to get involved with it here. So very uh, diverse platform that allows you to do a lot of great stuff here. And I'll post this link, but man, Bitcoin is absolutely flying up, absolutely flying up. Ridiculously huge moves here for Bitcoin today. And you love to see it, to be honest. You love to see it. Um, craziness is going on. Are y'all bullish on Bitcoin's continuation, guys? Do you think Bitcoin is going to continue here? craziness here 60 ish what do you guys think we get on bitcoin by the end of the week we're gonna end this poll and we're gonna ask another one right now what do you think we're gonna where do you think we're gonna go with by the end of the week 50 trillion i believe bank of america closed a lot of banks uh october will be a great month for bitcoin riding btbt yeah btbt is flying here guys look at btbt btbt is up to 1180s right now guys 1180s that's crazy 80k no more banks. It's going to be all crypto. Maybe, bro. 100K by the end of the year. 60K. We broke through our previous high. Yeah, Bitcoin is flying here, team. Craziness here. We're, we got up to 55,000. We didn't break over the previous high. The previous high on Bitcoin was at 65,000. Uh, so we didn't get over that yet. But here's Bitcoin right here. So we're still trying. Oh, wait, this is simulation. Let me get regular up. Yeah, here's Bitcoin. Look at this, man. The chart can't even keep track of it, guys. Wow. Wow, look at that. Look at Bitcoin flying up here, man. That's crazy. Um, Hey, nice trader T. Congrats. Great trade. Great trade. How do you set your copy trade to use all your money to follow whoever you choose to follow? Uh, I mean, you would just want to follow. I mean, you can uh, be careful because some of these guys in copy trading are trading. They're making thousands of dollars a week, which means they're swinging really hard using a lot of equity. And so if you follow them with a one to one ratio, you're going to take some big swings that some people's account can't handle. And so, you know, if you want them to just trade all of your money, you got to you got to analyze how much the trader makes. Like, let me show you. So like you got to analyze how much the trader makes. So like, for instance, if I follow this guy with a one-to-one -one ratio, this guy's making $162,000 over the last three weeks. $162,000. Um, so this dude is making like $55,000 a week. And so if I follow with a one-to-one -one ratio, I'm about to take some swings. But what I would do is like, if I follow somebody here, like say we follow this person, right? Say we follow this person. I This person's trading way too large. I follow them with a fixed ratio, 0.1. That way I'm taking 10% of the sizing they're taking and then I give myself a stop loss of 40% and I give them a maximum follow of 500 bucks, right? That way I'm protected and safe. So I hope that makes sense.
But yeah, there's BTBT absolutely flying up here, guys. Absolutely making huge rips. It's at 1180s for BTBT. Fly it up with Bitcoin strength. We got BYGR up there to 406s, guys. 407s for BYGR here. We've got Acer trying. We got BTBT. We got LMFA. We got some volatility today, guys. I'm kind of excited about it. We got EBON, um, AEHL. Can't go broke taking money. I'm up 145% on my Bitcoin long this morning on BitGet. Hey, congrats, brother. Congrats, man. Um, hey, do your thing, Larry. Good luck, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have been the previous uh, short-term high. I love your profile picture and the name of your account, by the way. Uh, uh, looks like the USA is about to default on its debt, so Bitcoin surges. Alt's not following. Yeah, it is what it is, Trish. You know. Uh, yeah, crazy volatility for pre-market, especially in crypto and stocks, man. I'm excited for it, bro. I'm excited, man. Hey, we got 450 people here, guys. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Whew. We're going to get ready to trade today. We're going to get ready to trade today, guys. Good luck. Um, again, let me know what you guys, what you guys are watching. Get ready, guys. Brazil talking to the accepted of Bitcoin going nuts. Yeah, I'm looking up the catalyst here. I'm still trying to find the catalyst here, team. We'll see if we can find it. Let's see if we can find it on Benzinga. Benzinga, honestly, super useful in finding a lot of this stuff. Um, so let's check out Benzinga and see news here. Let's see, a Riot blockchain reported 346% rise in Bitcoin. Again, I'm using Benzinga for this. Super useful uh, super useful to find a lot of these big moving stocks, guys. So check out Benzinga. Here's the link. Super useful. Very thorough platform. They, they also have crypto scanners as well, if you didn't know. Um, and we got VYGR here flying up here, guys. VYGR is up to 413s. Remember what we said, though, guys. These companies do have offerings on the table. And so while VYGR looks good now they are almost certainly going to hit people with an offering at some point in time and basically they're a lot of the time these type of companies pump up the price of their stock until it's a favorable level and then they they hit you with an offering when the price is the highest so they can capitalize on the biggest gains and so they pump the price of the stock up and then they slam down with offerings i like i said two way told me the same thing and i gotta agree with him there i think there's certainly risk with this one so y'all be careful uh, the catalyst with VYGR here, the catalyst for VYGR is uh, the company announced a license option agreement with Pfizer for the next generation Tracer AAV capside to enable neurologic and cardiovascular gene therapy program. Um, so here's the catalyst here. We can drop it for Voyager. Um, All right, so let me put this up. So yeah, here's the catalyst. Uh, shares are trading higher for the company announced a license option agreement with Pfizer for next generation Tracer AAV capside to enable neurologic gene therapy program here. Is it a bad idea to short a stock that does an offering? Um, I mean, you can. I mean, it's up to you. SEC says US won't follow china banning cryptocurrency so that's great um so that's great um let me see if we can find this crypto news right now guys yeah where do you see that article does anybody see it i don't see any article related to bitcoin here
Yeah. So yeah, Gary Gensler says the SEC won't bring in a China-style crypto ban, but Congress could. He said. Um, and then he said, SEC Chair Gary Gensler said the agency won't impose a China-like crypto ban as that authority lies with Congress. Most tokens might be some form of security set in an SEC oversight hearing on Tuesday. He said Gensler fielded questions from a lawmaker who slammed him for running something over investors. Uh, but it, yeah, basically, Gary with the SEC, Gensler, said that he has no plans to ban crypto as the authority lies with Congress. Um, he said that the comments, uh, Ted Budd asked whether the U.S. security regulator could follow China in imposing a blanket ban on cryptocurrencies, and he said, quote, no, I mean, that would be up to Congress. I think that many of these tokens do meet the tests of being an investment contract or a note or some other form of security that we bring them within the investor protection remit of the SEC, he added. The concern in the crypto world is that the U.S. government might limit or outlaw digital assets, much like it did with gold in 33. Gensler previously said that crypto exchanges, quote, uh, need to register with the agency because some of their tokens or products might be securities. Our approach is quite different, Gensler said. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll see what happens. We got six minutes, guys, six minutes. Yeah, VYGR at 409s. VYGR is really looking overextended. Uh, over the VWAP, the dump could be massive at the opening bell. Yeah, typically an offering is good to short, but obviously nothing is guaranteed. I guess I'm wondering if I would get stuck in the stock or if it would be like it just dropped in price. Um, well, usually with an offering, they're going to hit you with a news pending halt. Sometimes, I guess, not always, but I'm not sure, brother. I've never honestly done that. I've never shorted an offering before. I locked in some Bitcoin on pop towards 55K. We'll be looking to re-add lower power move this morning. Think it won't be long before 59,000 tests. I got to agree with you. I think that I think that's probably correct, but we'll have to see and wait, you know. Uh, but yeah, there's VYGR at 411s, guys. 411s for VYGR. All right, guys. Hey, we got five minutes, team. Five minutes. John, out of all my pre-market positions, thoughts on holding through the open? I'm not much of a holder there. I usually like to wait for the volatility to pan out after the opening bell before I start to hold any position uh, like that. And, but that's just me personally. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you can't make money holding stocks uh, into the open. It just means that like I don't personally myself. You know, but it's up to you guys. I, I, I've never really tried. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm a scalper, so I'm not really trying to scalp at the opening bell, mostly because if I'm being honest, that first five to 10 minutes is incredibly volatile and risky and kind of a coin flip in a lot of ways. And so there's just way too much risk holding positions into the opening bell because there's so much volatility in that first one to five minutes that it's just going to make it a coin flip. You know what I mean? And a lot of traders really romanticize the opening bell. You know, they say, oh, the opening bell is happening. Like, like it's some great time to make money. When usually it's not. Usually there's just a crap ton of risk at the opening bell and not much potential. Um, you know, it's, it's much better a lot of the time just to let the trend play out and then attack the stock after the trend plays out as opposed to uh, trying to predict what it's going to do in that first five minutes, you know.
All right, guys. Hey, we got two minutes, team. Two minutes. We're going to do a countdown. Shib, Bitcoin. Yeah, craziness. YOLO or no, no. <laughs> hey, guys. Good luck. Hey, I wish you guys the best. We got BYGR hit, hit, hitting this uh, $4 level. Let's see if it actually holds there or not. We got LMFA at 5 We got BDB, BTBT at 1170s. We got ACER trying to make moves. We've got uh, CEI trying. We all need some love today. Yes, sir. Hey, there's 500 people, guys. Hey, listen, if it's your first time here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Everything we do here is completely free. We don't charge for our sort. We don't try. We don't charge for. Our, uh, we don't charge for any of our content. Everything we drop is completely free. We don't sell a course. We don't sell a service. We don't claim to be an expert. I don't even claim to be a good trader. Maybe I suck. We're just a community of traders. And so if you want to be a part of that type of movement, hit the like button. If you hit the notification bell next to that, you'll next to the sub button, you'll get an alert. Anytime we go live or drop a new video, we drop it. Uh, we go live every single weekday morning for free. Don't be stingy. Hit the like button, guys. Let's do this. Good luck. Opening bell is in less than a minute, less than a minute, guys. We got 40 seconds. Really, we got about 30 seconds. So good luck. Whew. Yeah, be like Dylan. Hit the subscribe button. Everybody's doing it. Just try it one time. See how it feels. Bitcoin pulling back down. It's at 55K now. Bitcoin pulling back down. is at 55K. Good luck, guys. Hey, let's do this. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all right, let's do this, guys. Good luck. Let's trade today, guys. All right, so we've got BTPT absolutely flying up at the opening bell. It's at $12 a share now. Uh, a lot of people are watching Bitcoin to see what happens. Apple is dumping down a little bit. We got the SPY on the move as well. Um, a lot of people are going to be watching VYGR to see if that continues. It's up to 403s right now. The VWAP is way too low for me personally here. Um, way too low for me personally. It's at 405s, 407s, 410s. Uh, getting ready to test this 415 pre-market high up there. So let's see if it actually does that. But it's moving up there, guys. It's at 407s, 406, uh, 4. And so it, it continues to try here. There's VYGR rejecting up there. All right, guys. Bitcoin up to 54,000. Um Palantir dropping down at the opening bell. VYGR is still trying. What about CEI? It's moving up to 126 this year. Here's PLTR dipping a little bit at the opening bell this morning. Um, BTBT is probably dropping a little bit, I'm guessing, because uh, Bitcoin pulled back some, but it's not. So BTBT is actually flying up even without Bitcoin. It's up to 1220s here, guys. 1220s for BTBT. Uh, we also have LMFA, which is ripping up over $5 a share now for LMFA. It's up to 503s. 503s for LMFA. It's moving. Um, I'm going to switch these scanners over to regular so we can catch what's going on after the opening bell here. All right, guys. Um, Any and BTBT ripping? Yeah, I see BTBT flying here, guys. So BTBT is up to 1220s. Let's see if it holds at $12 a share now. I think a lot of traders are going to be ultimately paying attention to this $12 spot. And so let's see if it does. Let's see if it holds at $12 a share now. It's at 1230s. Um, AMD flying up some too. Maybe we'll get a little pullback zone or something. Um, All right, so we got BTBT pulling back a little bit here. We got Apple rebounding here too. Watching the market a little bit, to be honest here. Um, all right, so here goes uh, here goes BTBT pulling back some. Spy ripped up to four thirties here, so the spy popped up big. Apple was breaking lows. Let's see if we can get involved with something on the spy if it sets up well for us. 
Nothing traded yet. Now here's BTBT pulling back here. I'm still looking at YVGR. Or VYGR. Uh, pulling back. Um, here's Acer. BTBT is really the one flying the most here, though. The market itself is moving up pretty nicely, though. The SPY is up nice. Nothing yet. We're letting everything kind of play out a little bit. Um, AMTX. Yeah, AMTX is up to 1270s. AMD is up to 101.30s, 101.40s. Um, BTBT is dumping down a little bit here. Y'all see anything in the penny stock game moving? I don't see much on the scans. Um, we got KRT. Uh, KOLD is pushing up a little bit. Um, a lot of stuff is just kind of following Bitcoin here. Um, so Annie's pulling back some here as well. What? All right, so I'm in Apple with 25 shares, but I'm immediately down like a dollar a share. But we're shorting into Apple here. Um, pretty small, just to see if we can get a rejection down. But BTBT's up. I'm going to add a little bit here. CEI? Uh, yeah, here's CEI here. All right, I'm in Apple here. I can show you this position, but we're just kind of hanging out in it right now. We're, we're real, roughly break even. We're just looking for rejection at the VWAP here, and we'll get out if it does. Or uh, we'll, we'll get out if it doesn't. Watching the SPY pretty closely here. The SPY is continuing to rip up and try. So SPY get too much volatility. We're just going to unload from this one, which I think we're going to do right now. So $10 loss, pretty small. Um, just choppy so far with Apple. The market's not choppy, though. The market's actually looking pretty solid. So maybe we'll get some opportunity here. But so far, we're just kind of chilling right now. Uh, Apple moving right back up. We got VYGR. Heading back up to four dollars a share for VYGR. It's up to three nineties, three ninety fives. We just scalped a little bit from Apple again. Nothing much though. Um, All right, we just scalped about $62 from the futures market. So we scalped the pullback on the SPY itself, and it bounced really, really quickly for us. Um, scalping a little bit more on... Uh, right, we just scalped a little bit more on Apple. Uh, Bitcoin's back up to 55K, so if we check out Bitcoin here, here's Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's up to almost 55K again. So Bitcoin's rising. The SPY itself is rising. Um, here's AMTX. BTBT is starting to head back up. It's over 12. So check out BTBT here. It's at 12 tens. We're looking at that. Uh, mostly break even day so far. I haven't got the volatility that we really want to take advantage of. So we're just kind of hanging out. Hey, thank you, D. <laughs> I guess. Any? Um, Sava. AMC ripping at the bit. So let's check out AMC here. So AMC ripped, and now it's basically coming right back down. Uh, JUPW, uh, slow. CEI, down. Uh, any, any's flying. So any's up there to 670s. VWAP's just too low here, though. That's the problem, is that the VWAP is just really low here. Not really my style, if you will. All right, so we're, we jumped in a little bit of Apple here. Let's see if we get a, a move back up. Buying this pullback, we'll use the risk level of um, of 139.50 and with 75 shares. All right, nice. Take a little bit off there. Still about 50 shares. Take a little bit off there. Got ourselves back to break even on the day. Um, I like the downwick. We're going to add a little bit more here as well, see if we can capitalize on it. Market's flying up, so this should be good for me. We'll continue to add as it pulls back to the 60 level here add a little bit more maybe get into a full 100 share position here 
There we go. Take a little bit off there. Take a little bit more off. And all right, so we got green on the day from Apple and that little mini pullback dip by here. Still watching the SPY itself. Bitcoin's still trying to test these levels. It's a pretty slow, honestly, market day since the open. Um, so here's BTPT consolidating here. Uh, anything else you guys see that looks good? Again, we're checking out the Benzinga scanners. Uh, here's VYGR. There's BTBT up to 1206s. Any? Yeah, a lot of people looking at any A and Y. Um, so AMD's flying up here. Spy's pulling back a little bit. AMD's flying too, so it's looking pretty solid here. Pretty good. All right, nailing it in the futures market again. We are up $137 in futures. Um, with that move up in the AMD and the SPY, we're going to try to attack a little bit more into some of these other moves. Anything in penny stocks you guys see that looks good though? Watching the market, hopefully when the market rebounds here. I think I got to take maybe a little bit larger size, but CEI done. I'm not sure, man. CEI. Uh, I mean, tough time for that stock, man. Tough time, bro. You know, short report dropped. And some bad catalysts came out. Uh, we're in Apple again. Apple's been our chosen stock this morning. And uh, we're going to take a little bit off there. See if we get a pop over 140. Anything under 95 and we'll get out. There's 140. We're going to get out here. The market's taking a little bit too long. But we're up about 850 on the day. Got ourselves back to green. And uh, we're watching some of these pity stocks. I was going to plan to trade some of these today. But I don't see anything I really like, honestly. It's pretty slow. There is uh, A and Y. A and Y is at 660, so we'll see if we bounce there or not. Um, AMD is pushing up good. I haven't traded it today, though. Uh, Bitcoin's still consolidating at the uh, at the $55,000 level. So Bitcoin's still consolidating there. Uh, I have no idea what you guys should do with CEI. I think there's a, um, I think there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of information about it now that you guys that you got to decipher to be honest here team and so just good luck be careful um i don't know what's going to happen with cei of course and nobody does so y'all just be careful trade smart be safe and good luck you know um ah man i was gonna buy amd's little pullback it might be a little bit of a chase here oh my gosh We accidentally bought and exited AMD twice on accident here. Um, we're going to get out of here. Uh, we're buying this pullback on Apple, though. And the SPY's dipping some. But we just bought the little pullback on Apple. Let's see if this bounces for us. Um, we'll add a little bit more on the pullbacks here. And we're 50 shares. If you guys want to see the Apple trade. See if we can get a pop. And take a little bit off there. Um, watching the spot pretty close here. All right, so we'll take that pop there. So we're about 14. Also in AMD with a small sayer size. Got ourselves back green on AMD too. We're up about 15 bucks. Pretty small, and you know, we'll, we'll see what we get. You know, we're up fifteen dollars, but it's only twelve minutes into the opens. So, if we can make a dollar a minute, I'll certainly be happy with that. Uh, uh, wait, what was that? That was IPDN, guys. Look at IPDN; it's up to one sixties, flying over VWAP. Uh, volume starting to come in here for this one. So, um, yeah, watch. IPDN is moving. IPDN, GTE. 
Uh, we can look at GTE. But IPD is running. GTE just faded back down, unfortunately. Um, BTBT is going to fail soon. Uh, it's possible. Watching the spot to see if it gets over 431. I just scalped a little bit more on Apple, up about $16 in the day, just kind of grinding it up. Uh, watching the SPY itself pretty closely here. Um, try to see what the SPY does first here, to be honest. Um, in AMD. Trying to buy this little pullback to the 102 level, see if we can pop up. The range is huge for AMD, so i got to be careful. But uh, if the market moves up, AMD should follow it too. We'll add a little bit more here on AMD. Market's moving up, looking good. Take a little bit off there. Market's moving up really, really nicely here, team. All right, so we made a little bit of money there. Um, Should have held our Apple trade, but you know we're up a nice little twenty-one dollars on the day. Still grinding, pretty early. Still, we're only fifteen minutes into the day, fourteen minutes. Um, Right, we got IPD in really flying up here, guys. Look at IPD in. EDU is spiking. Ah, AMD dumped down on me qu uh, quickly, but... I'm going to leave my AMD trade about break even here. Um, there we go. Alright, so there's IPD and pulling back some. AMD is flying up here. We're going to go ahead and take that off. Uh... We're scalping the market again, catching this bounce up about 200 on the day in futures. Trying to scalp AMD again here. Hoping 102 holds of support. If it breaks down to 102 in any significant way, we're just going to unload here. We're gonna get out there. Um, watching the spy pretty closely here, but we gotta wait for a lot of stuff. Um, and if anybody does want to use the same platform I'm using for futures, I'm using a platform called Top Step. Top Step's a funded account program for futures. There's no PDT rule in the futures market. You can actively trade short with no PDT rule, and Top Step funds traders in that market. So they give you a demo account. If you can hit their target while following their rules and conditions, then they fund you the same amount. The base one's 50K. So if you can hit 3K in profit on that 50K demo, they give you 50K to trade with an 80% split. So you make 10K net on that 50K account, you get eight thousand dollars net they keep two thousand since they're funding you that money and again this is a company that's regulated in the u.s they pay out millions every year uh and it's a great way to help support our free content as well if you look at top step you can see we're up about 200 on the day and buy market sell market buy bid sell ask same thing that we're using in stocks same strategies that i'm using in stocks so if you want to trade my strategies you can in the futures market um you just got to learn the little nuances of futures but it's the same strategies really um same scalping setups that i use Grom looking volatile. What's up, DS? Um, yeah, Grom spike it up big, guys. Look at GROM. GROM -M is at 380s. Shib.
Right, we scalped a little bit more in futures. We are up 237. Watching the spy to see what's gonna happen here. Um, but the spy is a kind of a make or break it level here, so we're gonna wait to do anything else. Alright, so we got Grom pulling back to the view up here. The SPY is dumping down, which is why we're waiting to trade anything in larger caps. Um, you can see GROM is at 390s, 380s. Uh, so we're watching to see what happens there. Uh, we got Bitcoin still consolidating pretty slow at this point in time. Bitcoin slowed down. Uh, so it depends on which one you're using, James. Honestly, this program is pretty simple. So like Top Step is actually pretty simple here. Like what happens with futures is that there's a lot of different commodities to trade. There's oil, gas, silver, gold, cattle prices, coffee, all that different stuff, right? But if you want to trade my strategies, I'm just using them on the E-mini, which is the ES, right? And every three months, the contract changes from right now, it's the ESZ1. And in three months, it'll change to something else and you just have to swap it over to the new contract. But aside from that, if you want to trade it like me, like all you really got to do is, is, here's the sizing. The only difference in futures is that Every tick, it goes by ticks instead of cents per share, but think of ticks like cents per share in stocks, right? Every tick up or down on the E-mini is 1250 in profit or losses. If it's the micro E-mini here, then every tick up or down is $1.25 in profit or losses. So for as an example, if I have four contracts, that's $1.25 per tick per contract, and I've got four contracts, then that would be $5 per tick up or down. Right. So if it goes in me, it goes in my direction. One tick, I make five dollars. It goes against me in my direction. One tick, I lose five bucks, so forth and so on. And then it's just buy market, sell market, buy bid, sell the ass, just like stocks. It's the same thing as stocks. Um, but you got to make sure to use the trade of eight platform. Don't use MetaTrade or any of those stuff. It's really confusing for those. Yeah, there it goes. Bye bye. VYGR. Yeah, Grom pulling back here. Yeah, VYG are dumping down here. We got NXTD trying to. NXTD is flying up here, guys. If you like these really cheap penny stocks, NXTD is up to 44 cents. 44 cents. The SPY is pulling back right now, too, so I'm just kind of waiting. Uh, not. I, I have some future strategy videos, James, but I don't have any how-tos. I could do one, I guess. Uh... There you go. We got NXTD on the move. We got the SPY pulling back some. And so when I'm trading the SPY or the E-mini, when this happens, I'm not going to trade anything. It's too risky. It's number one, the VWAP is simply too close to this low right here. And so if we break under the VWAP, we start testing immediately this low of the day, which is very a very weak sign. And so because of that, I'm not going to poke around with anything right now in the mark in larger caps because the sentiment is changing. And we want to wait for the sentiment to fully change here. So we want to wait for the sentiment to fully change. So like if we're going to start shorting stuff, we need this to break all the way back down here and then maybe bounce back and we'll short into that little pop. But until then, we're just not going to trade it because it's middle range. We don't know what it's going to do. It's indecisive. It's right in the middle. And so it's too risky to trade right in the middle here uh, because we don't know what direction it's going to go. Now, if it was a stronger move up like this, for instance, you know, and if say the VWAP actually had followed the move up a little bit better, like say the VWAP was like here. You know, say the VWAP like followed it up closely. So the VWAP was like here, for instance, you know, and the VWAP was like right underneath it as this purple line like this. Let me show you. Um, like say this purple line is the VWAP. Then we would be a lot more prone to attack like a VWAP fade or a VWAP bounce here. So like if the VWAP had followed it up like this, then we're going to be a lot more likely to kind of buy this little pullback here. You know, we're going to be a lot more likely to buy these pullbacks to the VWAP. But because the VWAP is so low down here, it's too close to this previous low of the day right here. And so when it breaks under the VWAP, the, the risk there is that the sentiment can just boom, just immediately go down. Now, it's not always going to happen, but when you're trading, you got to analyze the risk in each individual trade. And when the VWAP doesn't follow the stock up, 
like this, which would have been preferred. And instead the VWAP stays at the bottom. That means that volume didn't really follow this stock up, right? When the VWAP is this low, it means the volume didn't really follow this stock up. And so it's it's less natural of a, of, of a level, if that makes sense, right? And so now since we're kind of middle range and we're close to these lows, we're just not gonna mess with anything like that. Uh, we're gonna wait because waiting and patience is the key in these type of situations. Um, but yeah, we got NXTD on the move here. We got NXTD on the move. So I hope all that makes sense. All right, we got NXTD. I yeah, know where's James. That's that's cool, man. Um, but yeah, we got NXTD on the move. We're watching this. Whatever happened to FTFT? Or no, BTBT. Uh, BTBT faded. Bitcoin's kind of dropping though. I mean, that's kind of what we get. You know, any stock or that is commodity based that follows any type of digital asset like Bitcoin or something like that, um, it's just going to follow suit. So just like it follows it up, it's also going to follow it down. And so when Bitcoin drops like this and tests this low here, you know, these other crypto related stocks are going to follow suit. Uh, we also got Grom on the move. Grom bounced at the VWAP here. And here's a better example. Like, like you see how the VWAP followed Grom up like this? Like when the VWAP follows it up, it's much more you know, you're much more able to buy these little pullbacks to the VWAP, right? And you can see how the VWAP followed this up, which means volume followed it up, right? But if we got the SPY here and use the SPY as an example, you know, the, the, the SPY opened up so high relative to the VWAP that it means the VWAP just didn't follow this thing up. Like, look at the, look at the, look how, look how deep the VWAP is relative to the price of the stock at these points in time. And so when that happens, it's less likely to continue in that upward momentum unless the VWAP style, unless the VWAP starts to follow it up. And it's also one of the ways that you can predict reversals. Uh, just to give you a heads up, uh, it's also one of the ways that you can ultimately predict reversals is by looking for stocks that open up really extended relative to the VWAP area. Yeah, of course, man. Happy to help, Velocity. Glad to help, bro. Like I said, man, like people can hate on me. They can make fun of me for how small I've traded, but I've been trading for years and years. And so like, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to like price movement. And I think, I think people hate on me because I think trading is just an emotional game. And so people lose money and they, they desperately need somebody to blame. And instead of blaming themselves, like they should, they blame random people. And I think that's where some of it comes from, to be honest, that or it's competitors. Uh, what time frame do you use to trade futures? I'm I'm a scalper, so I use one minute time frame, James. Uh, I'm almost always using one minute. I'll analyze longer term, but I'm scalping, so I'm most of the time using one minute. And then again, I mean, remember, guys, what I talked about here with the spy. Like, I told you guys what was going to happen with the spy, what, like five minutes ago? Like, right here, I told you guys it's too risky to buy this VWAP pullback. Why? Because it's so close to this low that this could ultimately happen. And this is how you predict these type of things, guys. Again, I did this live. I can't fake this, of course. You guys saw me predict this that this was going to happen. You guys, uh, so I hope you really took in the logic that I, I showed you here, because that type of logic is going to help you predict sentiment changes and then attack that sentiment change. Now, maybe I should have shorted in some of these situations, but the logic rings true, and I hope it makes sense. All right, Guru said to blame you. All right. Uh, hey, thank you, Adam. I appreciate that, brother. Um, hey, I warned you guys. I told you guys what was going to happen because uh, I see this every day. Like this is my, this is my wheelhouse, you know, like watching for sentiment changes and then attacking those sentiment changes is what I do. You know? And like, sometimes we do it good and sometimes we do it bad, but we're always going to attack the sentiment changes regardless. All right. So we're, we're jumping in a little short here on Apple. A little starter position here. See if we can get a breakdown and then maybe we can add into a little pop is what the goal is here. Um, and so we'll see what happens. Really, we're watching the SPY pretty closely here. And the SPY could bounce right back. So we got to, you know, understand that likelihood. Um, right, but there's the drop. Let's just see if it holds under 139. Yeah, there's the pop. Uh, so we'll short a little bit higher into this here now. We'll use 25 or so as a risk, maybe. Right, about break even again. Um, 
Watching the spy pretty closely here. The spy's what's gonna dictate this. All right, there we go. We're about to break even. Yeah, I might get squeezed out a little bit here, but that's all right. Nah, we'll get out there. A little eight dollar loss is nothing. Um. Hey, my man, Adam. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Adam. Hey, my man. Uh, respect, brother. Thanks for giving us strategies you have learned with experience. Hey, happy to help, bro. Happy to help, man. Um, and so here, we're looking at AMD. We're looking at the SPY. And, like, maybe we can capitalize on some of this good movement. But, hey, thank you for that $10, bro. I really appreciate it, man. That's awesome, dude. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the love, brother. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, we can capitalize on some of this breakdown in the market here is really the goal um, but you never really know, like once the spy bounces right here, just to show you guys, like once the spy bounces right here, there's just a lot of risk to be had because, you know, it, it could theoretically just go right back up. Um, so we're going to wait and just chill and see if we can find something that looks favorable. And if we get it great, if not, that's cool too. Um, ideally though, we'd like to get a breakdown here, of course, and we'll see if we get it. Uh, AMD broke down, so maybe I should attack that one a little bit uh, more. Like, usually what's going to happen here, though, is that the SPY is going to eventually break this low and continue down. Um, but no, thank you, brother. I appreciate that, Adam. Thank you, dude. Um, all right, so we did actually just kind of jump back in Apple here. Uh, we're currently up about $17 on it again. And we're riding the breakdown that we eventually got here. There's the breakdown. Nice. So we were able to jump right back in it. And this is something that you see me do. We're going to get out there. Uh, you'll see me jump right back into positions that I miss initially, just because usually I, I I don't mind doing it. You know, here we're going to jump right back into Apple here and then maybe add on a little pop. Or we'll just scalp this little baby move here first and see if we get a little pullback on the top here. Um, so, yeah, there's the breakdown. Uh, and again, this is going based off of what the SPY did. So here's the SPY. SPY got a big down wick here, so we'll watch that and see what we get with that as well. Um, yeah, people hate you like they hate Tom Brady. Yes, sir. Hey, this is where the goat over here. Um, and we'll see what we get. Uh, again, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm not always guaranteed to make money. You know, um, hopefully we do naturally, but not uh, money making is not, of course, guaranteed. And, um, you know, you got to just, it's not just about memorizing strategies, guys. It's also about understanding risk and how to approach risk, you know, like, yeah, the biggest thing with you when you're trading is just to give yourself really specific parameters uh, of risk, right? Like if you lose over a certain amount of day, you get out. Um, and that's really usually the right move. Like giving yourself a maximum loss per day is going to save you, um, you know, heavily. Right, we're, we're still attacking AMD a little bit here. Or no, Apple, I mean. Sorry. Going to look to maybe get out here, capitalize on that, and maybe we'll jump back in it. But we're, we're grinding up. We're up about 32 bucks on the day. Um, but yeah, here's the breakdown. And I mean, we call this break. The biggest thing that you understand, and this is how I'm able to make money in this in this in the futures market. Like I'm up 237. The reason I'm able to make money like this is because I can predict what the spy is ultimately going to do. Like if I can predict what the spy is going to do, futures trading is easy. And again, if you can wait for things like this, it's pretty easy to predict what the spy is going to do. Uh, once it starts testing those lows, it, it starts getting really weak. That's the time when you can start to short. And you know, this is why I love shorting. So we just took a little two dollars from uh, the Apple breakdown again. We're up about thirty-five bucks on the day. <laughs> hey, John, market looking sideways. Ha 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 ha. Uh, hilarious. Uh, but no, the market was looking sideways until we just broke that low. Spike consolidating around two hundred MA. Looks like we'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the breakdown. Market's continuing to break down too, dragging everything else down with it as well. Um, hey, 
Hey, nice, Michael. Congrats, bro. Congrats, man. Green is good, dude. Green is good, man. Um, yeah, Grom, G R O M. Yeah, Grom ripping up at 440s. Grom is putting in some moves, man. And it's trending with the VWAP, but this is why the VWAP is powerful, guys. If you see this, this is why the VWAP works, is because you can accurately predict trends here. Uh, I, I can't check. I'm not going to check the Ortex data, uh, but I can check my app data here. Oh, man. I thought I rounded this. I built the code to round. Oh, well, I'll have to fix that. It shouldn't do that. Why did it do that? Let me see. Yeah, this one rounded. I don't know why that one didn't round for Grom. Right, but yeah, it's got a negative 4% short float change over the 20, last 24 hours. Um, here's the short chart. I gotta, sorry, I still gotta fix some bugs in this program, but we're building it. It's, it's a slow process, team. So no loss, or I've had one loss today, guys. That's right, one loss. We'll use 75 as a risk here. see what we get um eh, we're about to get stopped out most likely here i guess so we'll see there's 78 and eh, we're all right Dude, i gotta get this computer out of the way it's hitting my arm too much um all right there's a rejection which is good nice back to green on this one slightly green break even mostly What I'm really excited about is the World Series of Trading competition, guys. The World Series of Trading is going to start in a few, in like a, a couple of days, um, and it's a super cool competition because they give you a demo account, and the best traders take that demo account, and the traders that place in the competition win free packages. Um, and so, if you place in the competition, you win free packages. If you place in my team, you win free packages, completely free. They give you a demo account for a week, and uh, you can join my team here. It's a nonprofit organization that is doing a competition for trading. Really fun competition, honestly. We're going to take a little bit off there just to protect the trade. And uh, yeah, you can join my team here. Do it now, guys. Join my team for the WSDT. I certainly appreciate it if you do, of course. And uh, hopefully we can place in this thing, man. That's what I'm hoping. So we're going to, we're going to, our goal is to place in this competition um, myself and hopefully my team can too. All right. So we're going to take some profit. Uh, again, this is the PL for the day. Um, very small day so far, but I mean, we're about 30 minutes into the market open. So, you know, that's my PL right now, guys. And we'll see if, you know, we can find anything else that looks good. Um, here's the spy. So there's the spy. Let's see what the spy has. I mean, it, it's got a little, little bit of a ways to bounce back here. Let's see if it breaks lows, if it continues down, or like what happens with it. Spy bouncing back to 428s here. 428s. Here by popping back it's at 42820s here looking good well so we're gonna wait let 
market popping back. Let's see what happens if, what if it hits that previous level up there for the SPY. I think that's what a lot of people are waiting for. Now, let's see if it gets 428.50s. DNA was a colossal scam. All day stream today, John. I don't know. I'm waiting to get confirmation that I can use the scanners for all day. So we're waiting until we get confirmation from somebody that I can use the scanners all day before we, we actually do it. And so I'm not in any rush to do it. Uh, we're just waiting to get some confirmations for the scanners uh, to get the green light to use them from Benzinga, if they're going to let me use it, or from TradingView, if they're going to let me use it too, you know. Uh, so we're just waiting basically to see what we get there, see if we can um, get the green light for the scanners we're trying to use. All right, market's pulling back, hit that level, Let's see if it continues now. Trying to reject back down, patiently waiting. I'm also looking at EDU. EDU is at 205s. Eh, I don't like that one at all. It's too uh, slow. What else we got? We got Bitcoin back up to 54.5 thousand. So that doesn't look too, shab uh, too shabby. Grom is halted. Wow, guys, look at GROM. That's crazy. That's crazy. Look at GROM, guys. That is a huge rip up to 5.11s for Grom. GROM, guys. GROM. That's a crazy move. In all honesty, huge rip. So watch GROM, guys. GROM, crazy move. That's a crazy big move, too. Um, let's see. This one was halted at 9.08 or 10.08. .10 so it should resume at 10.10 or 10. Ugh. At 10, 8, uh, at 10, 12 is when this should resume. Or 10, 13. Man, I don't know what is wrong with me today. Uh, 10, 12 is when that should resume, guys. 10, 12. Good luck. Um, all right, so we're actually scalping a really nice trade from Apple here. Uh, we're up about 50 bucks on Apple alone. I want to hold this 25 shares to see if we get a broader breakdown here. We're about $51. We want to see a broader breakdown because the SPY is breaking down. So like I've already taken a lot of profit off here, but I want to let the rest work to see if it's going to continue down in a much bigger way so I can just maximize profit from this trade. I've already made money. I'm certainly going to make money on this trade no matter what. The question is how much money I make, and that's the favorable position you want to find yourself in as a trader. No matter what, we're making money here. And so, you know, I, I guess I'll give myself the whole dollar as a risk up there at 138, uh, 139. If it breaks over 139, I'll just exit, which might be happening right now. And we're out, which is fine. We're up $48 on Apple. We are currently up about 53 bucks on the day. So here's the P&L right now. Not too bad. Market's popping back up, so it looks like I got out at the right time here. Uh, we're up fifty, roughly fifty-four bucks. Uh, because if Benzinga gave you the platform for free, why do you need permission to use the scanners? Um, because just because they allow me to use something. I mean, they have they've given me permission to use the scanners. Like Benzinga allows me to use the scanners with a two-second delay, uh, but as is any partnership, as you, should you with any partnership, you should really confirm that you're allowed to do what you want to do before you do it. And so that's what I'm doing. We're just going to wait. You know, I'm not going to risk my channel, you know, for no reason. Like that would be dumb. Anybody in my shoes, that would be very stupid of anybody in my situation to do. Um, all right. So, yeah, it looks like I got out of app at just the right time. I was able to scalp that little sliver right there. And what I did was I swung into the profit I already built on the day. All right, so here's GROM. It should resume right now, guys. If it's a five-minute halt, GROM should resume right now. So, yeah, I got the permission in writing, Alex. Uh, I got it via email, which is, you know, if you guys don't know contractually, anything through email is valid contractually. Um, anything through text or anything else, like a chat, is not valid. But if you get it through email, it's valid, you yeah. know. 
just a heads up on business for all those. Yeah, for sure, Robert. They're great, you know. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, Benzinga is great. Like I said, y'all check out Benzinga. Benzinga is super useful. Um, you know, y'all see just three scanners here, but there's a whole, you know, there's a, a ton of scans that they allow, that they have on their platform. Super useful. Like check out my, look at my view here. Look how useful this is. There's so much stuff going on with Benzinga that you can use. And they do allow a completely free trial, two weeks, completely free. And I don't even think you need to use, I don't even think you need to use, um, I don't even think you need to use, a credit card to sign up. So I think they allow it with no sign with no credit card. Uh, so completely free trial. Check it out. There's the resumption for GROM. There's the resumption. Yeah, there's the Benzinga link. Check them out. Super cool. All right. So there's the resumption. It's at 550s. It did gap up on this halt. It did gap up on the halt. Um, Hey, nice trader T. Congrats. You're killing it today. Good job. Yeah, I talked to Trader T. Trader T is sick. So that's why we haven't seen her in a minute. All right, so the spy is kind of pop, uh, popping over this trend here. Here is a makes no sense that you have to ask, but okay. I mean, to be honest, Tom, I don't know how old you are, brother, but you know that's just smart business, man. You know, anybody in my shoes is gonna do it, dude. Um, there's nothing wrong with me asking. I don't know what you know. I don't know why you're so upset. It seems to be kind of like a rigid, you know, way to be, Tom. No offense to you, brother. Um, you know, of course I'm gonna ask. I mean, anybody in my shoes would. Benzing is a great company. They've been really great to me. Uh, and we're going to keep working with them, of course. I mean, you know, great company. Um, awesome scanners that I genuinely use. Uh, and yeah, you know, they're pretty cool with me uh, as a trader. So yeah, we're going to we're going to be nice and be, you know, we're going to do the right thing and ask them. All right, so here's GROM. It's at 530s. Yeah, yeah, it's called Good Business Practices. Uh, like I said, I, there's a, I don't know why, but you got like a few people in the chat that are just super, uh, not, no offense, Tom, but they're just super weird with like, they get weird over just the weirdest things. Like some of them get mad if I forget, if I forget to play the music uh, over like a five minute period. You know, some get mad if I have to ask Benzinga for stuff. It's just a really weird and rigid way to be for some of you guys. No offense to y'all. Uh, just y'all chill, you know? Everything we do here is free. You know, enjoy yourself. Uh, I'm, I'm not really defensive, Tom. What I am saying, though, is that, like, it shouldn't bother you that much, me having to ask them. You know what I mean? Uh, and you could say, oh, I'm not bothered by it, but continuing to kind of go back and forth with me shows that you're a little bit bothered by it, and there's just no reason to be like that, you know? Uh, we want the vibe chill here, Tom. So it's all good, but you know. Right, and literally everybody in the chat is like, yeah. I'll put it this way, Tom. If the entire chat is like, yeah, it makes perfect sense to ask and you're the only one making a big deal about asking, then you're the common denominator there, bro. You know? Uh, and so I think it's, you know, I think you got to ask yourself, why does it bother you that I have to ask? Um, but again, it's all love here. I'm not trying to start drama. Um, we'll see if GROM holds this 520 level. This was the halted level. This is where it opened up after the halt. And so if we look at this. Right. It's completely irrelevant. You know, there's no reason to just go back and forth over dumb stuff. Hey, what's up, Levi? I'll short a breakdown, but I'm at support, or I'll buy a breakout, but at resistance. Hey, what's up, Realtor? 
but like I said, I like you being here, Tom. You're all good, bro. But it's just like one thing I've noticed, Tom, and, and, and again, I notice this for a lot of different people here, but there's certain people here that don't really say anything positive and they only kind of start poking on like they only have they only have issues, I guess is the best way to put it. And like, listen, guys, I love you all. I appreciate this community. But like, let's just keep it positive, you know? Um What are y'all watching today, guys? I'm watching The Spy. The Spy actually broke down really nicely here. Really nicely. Yeah, let it be done and over with chill vibes only, you know? Hey, I love you too, Ali B. I appreciate the support, brother. Thank you, man. Um, Watching The Spy. The Spy's kind of ba bouncing back and forth. Right. I joined for a positive trading group. Just listen to the music and chill. Yeah, 100%. You know? Don't get mad at me because I got to ask my sponsor if I can do something. Like, who cares? You know? <laughs> uh, anyways, we got Apple at 139.30s. We're looking at that. Maybe I'll shore back into it. We just got to wait. Hey, nice, James. Currently watching a sea of red. Yeah, I feel you, bro. Hey, nice, James. Um, I'm watching for entries on small craps, watching the Red Sea. <laughs> I feel like I'm such a better trader by watching you. Hey, thank you, brother. I appreciate that, Stephen. been paper trading because this penny market has been bad for so long hey hey maybe y'all can't get mad when the music stops i guess that's a reasonable thing you know All right, so good thing I didn't short back into Apple because look at this man. Grom just failed and got halted on the way down. That's crazy. Good thing I didn't short back into Apple because look at this, man. Huge rip up. Um, I don't know if Trader T is sick. Is Trader T sick? Oh, I think I said... Uh, Tiny, tiny trader. I don't know if I talked about trader T. I meant to say tiny trader. They both start with T's and have trader in them. But Miss Tiny Trader was sick. That's why we haven't seen tiny in a few days is what we call it. Um, yeah, exactly, Kai. You know, exactly, man. Yeah, Tiny, Tiny was sick, I think. Tiny left me a comment saying she was sick. And so that's what it is. Um, I wanted to trade some more. I'm just kind of hanging out, guys. I, I'm, there's not a ton of action, you know? Everything's kind of moving down. I'll put it that way. Everything's kind of moving down. Except for maybe the spy. Apple's kind of heading back up, I guess. Yeah, I see AMD ripping. Uh, I see Apple ripping and the Spy ripping back up too. But they're still, they're still, they still got to break highs. Yeah, well, if it's a stop loss, and uh, if it's a stop loss, Dylan, and it gets halted, it's gonna skip right past it a lot of the time. You know, again, these are the risks of trading some of these penny stocks. Like as I've grown as a trader, I've gotten kind of 
you know, turned off by trading some of these penny stocks for these exact things, you know, like eventually you're not going to ever be able to avoid all of them. Eventually you're going to get stuck in one. It's just going to be a huge drawdown in any system you build around them. Um, so it's just, there's just so much risk. Um, Yeah, no worries, Dylan. Um, BTBT making moves again. Yeah, Bitcoin's starting to kind of edge back up is really what's going on here. So if we look at BTBT, Bitcoin is starting to edge back up. So if we pull up BitGit here, Bitcoin is starting to move back up. Um, Like we can see bid get here and you can see Bitcoin. Bitcoin starting to edge back up. It's at 54.2K. Uh, and remember guys, check out BitGit if you want to trade the same strategies that I use. They're not the same strategies, but if you want to trade the same uh, crypto copy traders I use, I've been looking for profitable ones, guys. If y'all have any recommendations on profitable copy traders, let me know. Because we're looking at some of them and some of these are really solid. Like look at this guy. He's what? Um, And so I did get a message back from Trading View, who I'm talking to right now. trader yeah but yeah let me know any copy traders that you like there's this guy seal and this guy seems pretty profitable i look at how big their losses are that's the real key and this guy seal has had pretty small losses and so this guy seal is a pretty good option look at this guy so he has made he's not sitting on any bags of losses most of his gains are anywhere between like one to twenty percent and his losses are right around that same window and they're much much fewer and some of his gains are 43 percent 97 percent 52 percent and so this dude seems pretty solid his name is seal he's literally got one spot left uh if you guys got any other copy traders that you like let me know there's this guy fun at gmail here and this guy's putting in huge gains problem is let's see when he loses how big it is so this guy only had one loss two losses over hundreds but the problem is i see seven trades he's probably sitting on huge losses like they do man what a bunch of jerks bro like, why do that, man? Who cares what your accuracy rate is if you're losing 2,000% in one trade? Your accuracy rate is insignificant. What about this JMK guy? Let's look at this guy. All right, so gains are good. He's mostly shorting Bitcoin, though, for scalps, which is fine. Good, good, good. Except for the crash on the 7th, but he, he compensated for that, which is good. There was the crash on the 7th, which most people lost money. 
All right, so this guy's actually pretty solid, and he's been trading for over a month on BitGit. JMK is probably one of my favorites. I think I'm going to follow this guy. You can also, listen, guys, so you can copy trade. You can also just trade regular crypto like Bitcoin, all that good stuff, or you can trade futures, or you can even paper trade on this platform for free. You go to simulation here, and to deposit money, you just go to buy crypto. Say, hey, I want to buy $500 worth of Bitcoin using a Visa card or whatever you want to use, and click purchase at the bottom right. Uh, you can check them out here. I'll post this link. Great way to help support the channel by checking out BitGit. Uh, they are a sponsor of our channel, so, you know, definitely really cool. He sits around listening to Kiss from a Rose while copy trading crypto. Hey, uh, are you still using that big book of a phone? Of course, bro. Listen, I got this phone, man. Look, it's the dopest phone you've ever used. Look at this. Look at this thing, man. It's like an iPad. I can fold it up. Boom. It's a regular phone. You know, look at that. Hello. You know, answer the phone. What? Today's video is sponsored by the Galaxy Z Fold 2. I'm just kidding. It's really not. Don't sue me. Don't sue me, Samsung. But yeah, um, GROM is halted on the way down. And it was halted at 21. It'll probably resume in about two minutes. Two minutes is when the resumption should be if it's a five minute halt. Or no, if it's a 10 minute halt, I mean. So two minutes is when the shing, uh, when, when it should resume. Also, y'all check out the video that SPAC just posted. It's a backtesting video, backtesting the moving average crossover strategy. Super useful. Um, a lot of people should check it out. But yeah, basically what TradingView said was that crypto trade, uh, crypto, uh, crypto scanners can be streamed real time no matter what. Um, but stock scanners might not be. So let me... Um, Let me sign in. Okay, good. All right, I got the premium trial. Okay, so he said, furthermore, our played plans. Um, all right, so we're going to be reaching back with them. Um, okay, so there's the resumption for GROM here. There's the resumption for GROM. Yeah, they're not really super heavy, bro. Like, this is not really that heavy. Like, you know, like I can flip this thing. It's not super heavy. It fits in my pocket easy. I run with this phone. Uh, and it really is just like a regular phone, except it turns into an iPad when you open it up. And so what's really cool is like using Weeble and stuff on this phone. So like pulling up Weeble charts and like check it out. Like Weeble charting on this phone is pretty cool. You can pull up like... You know, you pull up charting and like really trade and do stuff on it too. So like, that's what's really cool about it. Um, I could figure out any stock, bro. I could figure out Tesla too. It just depends on the volatility of Tesla. Tesla's sideways right now with the market, but the market is sideways too. But yeah, there's GROM. Um, I had a flip flow. Wow. Damn, Daniel, bro, congrats, bro. That's crazy, dude. 
Awesome job, brother. Can I tell them here, or do you want me to not say anything, bro? That's an amazing job, bro. That's a great... Your portfolio looks awesome, dude. Congrats, brother. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, I know. I'm reading it right now, Slim. That's, that's dope, man. Um... Hey, thank you, Rod. Hey, I appreciate you being here too, brother. Hey, thank you, man. Have a good day, bro. Thank you, brother. You can show it if you want. Yeah, so Daniel just sent me this screenshot of uh, his portfolio. Look at this. My man Daniel is up 120K on Tesla. 120K. He's up 2,380%. He's also up 90% on CNP. Uh, that's crazy. Nice, Daniel. Congrats, brother. That's great. Nice work, bro. Yeah, Grom dumping down here. Yeah, look at GOTU. GOTU is ripping up. Yeah, so if y'all act like Daniel don't know what he's talking about, apparently the man does. Um, but no, nah, congrats, brother. Yeah, Tesla. Yeah, Daniel's been talking about Tesla for months, man. So, hey, happy for you, Daniel. Congrats, bro. Like I said, dude, my kids have been sick for the last week. Today was the first day, or no, yesterday was the first day where my kids finally went back to school. And so hit me up, man. Um, And I'm trying to look up some of these copy traders here. Y'all check out Benzinga. We're going to go ahead and close the stream down. Hey, nice slim. Yes, sir. Hey, nice Robert. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, let me. I'm going to be looking for some cop profitable copy traders. I know this under dot guy was pretty solid, too. My favorite one so far is under dot. This guy kills it. Absolutely kills it. He's up about 5K in the last, uh, or he's up about 5, 5K total, about 1,800 bucks in the last three weeks, which is reasonable sizing, about $600 a week. And um, yeah, not too shabby here, guys. So hey, check out under dot. And again, good luck in the market, guys. Check out Benzinga if you want to do a completely free trial of these scanners. Complete free trial of these scanners, guys. There's the link. Uh, the price it rose to, it's called averaging into a position, Eric. And you shouldn't do that unless you know how to. Like, I average in sometimes. Baby fussing like crazy. Time to get help my fiance out. Did good today. Learned a lot about futures and made $175 shorting the E-mini on top step. Thank you. Hey, good job, brother. Hey, just be careful. Remember, you can trade the micro E-mini, James. It's a much smaller... Um, contract. So instead of the regular e mini where it's going to be twelve fifty per tick, the micro e mini is a dollar twenty five per tick. And so especially if you're new to futures in your first week, you probably want to trade that just to kind of get the feel of things and understand it. But good luck, brother. Hey, I appreciate you guys. And yeah, if y'all want to try out Top Step, guys, here's the link. I'm certainly biased in their favor because I get a commission, but they fund traders and futures. Uh, they fund traders in the futures market if they prove you're profitable. A lot of people use Top Step, very well known and respected company. And you can find the link there for Top Step. 
Again, be sure to check out the free trial that uh, Benzinga offers, guys. It's up. In, it's, if you scroll up in chat, it's there. Good luck in the market, guys. Love you all. Check out BitGit if you want to copy trade like me. There's a lot of really profitable copy traders as well. And BitGit, there's no PDT rule in the in the crypto market. Uh, they've got regular investing, regular futures trading, so you can short and go long in crypto. Or you can follow these other traders, literally trade for trade in the market. So check them out as well. Good luck, guys. Hey, love you all. Have a good day. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that, Sky. And um, hey, yeah, good luck, guys. Have a good day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, team. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We do this live for free every day. Hit the like button before you leave. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.